you hear all these shops and you know who's better who's this people can build faster cars people can probably build better like who knows but at the end of the day my cars are out there being seen by all doing what they're supposed to do there's no better feeling than solving your problem whether it's finding the part fixing the part you know whatever it is that's what makes the build fun not being the fastest white supra on a tuesday sr versus ka the ka is a piece of shit. it's a truck engine it's the worst thing that's ever happened to that's not what i was expecting you to come i with hate k24 <laughs> i think drifting really hurt the car game for a lot of years there's not another part of the sport where it looks cheap to get in because double what it should miatas are the worst car in the world i don't think they've ruined drifting i think they're terrible drift cars they're good like entry-level road race cars they're good for hairdressers women the miata people are just you know don't even get me started Welcome back to another episode of the Street Alpha Podcast. I am your host, Tooks, and we are out here in Connecticut. So you guys have requested another guest as well. Like I always say, my job is to travel for you guys and make sure we get all the guests that you guys want on the podcast. So today we have legendary Tommy Effia. Let's clap it up for Tommy Effia. <laughs> I can't wait to hear that. <laughs> so really happy that I have another influencer slash like, what, what would you consider yourself like? Just a car guy. Car, uh, I car guy, obviously. Influencer, but... yeah. I mean, car builder. I don't right. really do it myself, though, just before anyone says anything. I try to get these hands dirty as little as yeah. possible. But yeah, just a car guy. Just been into it forever. So you don't consider yourself an influencer? Like when it comes to... Because if you're, if you're, you're a car guy, but you also have an influence on, on people. Who... I, I like to influence the influencers. And I don't okay. mean that in like a cocky way. Like I want to see... I know at the root of all this if influencers are doing stuff right yeah it's going to trickle down to the viewers right so rather than i i'm a small platform but i'd rather you know i'm friends with some bigger people and mm -hmm. I, i'd love to i i love to give them ways to to make right. it because i don't like junk okay i hate garbage you met you mentioned that before i hate garbage and there's a lot of um there's a lot of bills out there you probably see on social media that are may garbage. seem yeah i guess he says <laughs> i don't want to say it but you know i'll say it i did yeah. a post like forever ago and it was like a bunch of garbage bags and then there's one spray painted gold and i just post it and it said like respect all builds yeah. <laughs> you know because i don't respect all builds I okay don't do that i hate most builds okay that's a different most. take yeah all i right. mean you know you you hear these little excuses it's clean for this it's clean mm -hmm. for a 96 it's clean for a drift car it's yeah. clean that's not real you know, like to me, that's not real. It's clean or it's not. Right. And I got asked recently, like, what is the beginning of clean? Yeah. And it took me a long time to figure that out because like, what is clean, right? Like, is it only clean to use period correct parts, et cetera? My vibe is like a, a one of on the, on the clean scale. Yeah. Is a stock, is the car bone stock. Bone stock. Bone I, stock I brand new. Yeah. That's, Bones that's, are brand new. That's really clean. Mm -hmm. I don't like, you know, you're a Corolla is still clean if it's bone stock brand new, obviously. Yeah. But um, once you start modifying things, they have to follow either be an upgrade or, or, or as good as OEM. So more, you're more of an OEM plus guy, they say, right? That, that's considered I mean, clean to you? I like themes, but I wouldn't call myself only an OEM plus guy. I mean, mm -hmm. like that engine right there is... Sure. Is that OEM plus? Absolutely not. My idea of OEM plus, that's another thing that needs to be defined. Yeah. My definition of OEM plus is, um, is, is a uh, trim level upgrade. So if you have okay. an M3, this is a terrible example. You have an M3 and you put an M5 motor in it. Yeah. That's OEM plus. If you have an M3 and you put pure turbos on it, yeah. that's not OEM plus. That's aftermarket plus. You know right, what I mean? Like right, once, once right, you do that, right. so I'll show you some builds, you know, when we're done, like where I kept the theme of OEM plus my mm -hmm. definition and you pop the hood and the car looks bone stock. Okay. I did it with a four door skyline with a 34 GTT engine and trans. Um, 
And the idea was you pop the hood and it looks like you're popping the hood in an R34 GTT, even though it was a 32. <laughs> yeah. But the car made 493 horsepower, 487 torque. Oh. And it looked, you know, brand new. Yeah. And it, it just it just looked cool. And I'll get a little out of control with those themes. Right. You know, I'll get obsessive. But uh, that's what's fun. Because making a 1,000 horsepower for some people is cool. Making a road race car for some people is cool. I really like to have a theme, stick with it. And... I just think it's more impactful, you know? I, I hear you. I, I mean, I could agree. I'm, I'm the same way when it comes to builds. I think a lot of people, when they get a car, um, especially the newer cars, it's yeah. like so easy to kind of keep them clean because we're in that generation where we're Right. In, like you your know, Supra. Exactly. Like that, that, that car has no excuse to ever not be clean. I agree. And I haven't seen, I've seen some 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 stuff oh, that's there. been sketchy. Coming out. Yeah. The worst car that's ever hit the ground and got ruined is like FRS, BRZ, like the, that chassis. Yes. Those cars were ruined like out of the dealership. People were literally <laughs> taking them home and like just cutting them up. Yeah. Thanks a lot, TJ Hunt. Um, And just putting <laughs> wide bodies and bags and all this. Yeah. And like the Supra is kind of like, the new FRS, you know, okay. like not from a performance standpoint or anything like that. It's just easy to, it's easy to acquire. Mm -hmm. It's not crazy expensive. And there's a huge aftermarket following. And if yeah. you, if you want to cut it up and put dumb stick on flares and shit, you can do that. You can go both ways with yeah, that car. Yeah. You can do stance, you can do performance, you could do, you know, a whole wide body. One thing camp. I don't believe you can do is OEM plus though. On a Supra? Yeah. Because what are you like in my definition, OEM okay. plus what you can do bolt-ons. Yeah. They're not really OEM, obviously. As soon as you do bolt-ons, there's not like you can go grab a, like I said, in the M3 scenario, if you, if you take an M3 and you put an M5 motor in it, yeah. but you make it look stock, I, even if I don't like BMWs, I appreciate that car. Right. If you go and take an M3 and put pure turbos and you know get Jordan to tune it and do all yeah. that stuff, it, it's, it's just a modded car. At that point, okay. Like I don't want to hear OEM+. plus. I mean, it can go a level where you keep the car stock and you put... I don't know if, if it even works, but like M4 wheels, I, I don't think that would look good. But like if you yeah. did stuff like that, the Supra has no OEM counterpart. You know, it really right. doesn't. So, so you're, you're so like for a 350Z, it'd be like a Nismo. So that 350Z has Nismo Juke R seats, mm -hmm. Nismo steering wheel, Nismo shift knob, uh, LMGT fours, which mm -hmm. are Nismo wheels, JDM Aero. Like that's OEM plus. OEM Granted, plus. it has Gretty brakes. I do have a set of R35 brakes. R35 brakes on that, and I'm eventually doing a VR30 in that. So that car will be okay. a nicely modified attempt at OEM Plus where I just don't want to put the R35 brakes. I have the Gretty brakes already, right. and I have an HKS exhaust and Olin's. Okay. But like coilovers, like you can't really, yeah. you know, you can't right. really get like an OEM coilover, but like Olin's are great. Uh, the R35 brakes would be an OEM upgrade. Right. The VR30, OEM upgrade. The Juke R seats, they're just Sportsters. Right. But they say Nismo on them and they're from a dumb juke. But like, yeah, <laughs> that's super cool. You know, like, right. I, and, and it's all OEM arrow except for the lip and the mirrors. Okay. So, so I, I, I definitely see your take. That's on. I'm my actually definition. glad you're speaking just, on it. Yeah. I just don't understand what, how someone can say something's OEM plus if it's, if it's not OEM, it, it can't be OEM plus. In yeah. my opinion, that's just aftermarket. That's just a build. Like, why are we labeling aftermarket stuff OEM plus? You have a point. I honestly never, I no never one thought does. about it. And it drives me nuts when I see people like, this is OEM plus. And I'm like, you have T's and, you know, some BC coilovers and a front mount intercooler on an S13. Like, it's not OEM plus. It's aftermarket. It's built. It's so if, if, if a company, let's say for for Supras, right? The Mark V Supra, if they mm -hmm. don't come out with a, like, let's say, um, you know, like a Nismo or... Uh, TRD. Yeah, exactly. So if but there's no parts for that for the Supra in that in that sense. And that's why I said I don't believe you could build you an could OEM plus Supra. Right. If if you cuz even as a Supra, like if you want to really get down to it, it's Toyota. We know it's BMWs, you know you drive <laughs> yeah. a BMW. But yeah. like let's just let's just take the the Supra out of it. Let's talk about like an M a Z4, mm -hmm. right, which is the counterpart. Yeah. You go put an M5 twin turbo V8 in it. You do some M4 wheels, you you know, you change the seats to some M3 comp seats, like shit like that, like that's a gangster car and it and it's timeless. No yeah. one will ever look at that and be like, eh. But you look at all these trends with these builds and every five years there's a refresh or that's not cool anymore. This is cool. Mm -hmm. I believe my builds or my goal, I shouldn't say I believe, my goal with my builds is to be timeless. I want you to look at it 10 years from now, still be happy with it yeah. or it would have worked the day that car came out. And I, I, think I, I think I pulled that off. You know, like that's my only goal. 
I agree. So we we took a we took a little tour around the shop. I've never been here before. It's a massive shop. It's at fourteen thousand square yeah. feet. Huge. Only so, half of its use. Yeah. Used, <laughs> I got lost in here, but there is a ton of cars in here. A lot of skylines, and I think that's basically what you what you're known for, right? Skylines, basically. Uh, yeah. So yes. we have. He has a lot of skylines here. R thirty fours. There's R thirty three back there as well, right? We have like probably four thirty threes and R thirty four, and then. I mean, there's a ton of cars I'm probably forgetting, yeah. but uh, there's S chassis. We got three S15s mm-hmm. here. You know, there's S15s as well. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of lot of different cars. Nissan though, and then Nissan. a couple Porsches right. sprinkled in, and then the Evo, and you know. So you're primarily known for that, just so just to give the the, the viewers and listeners. Kind I would of a say I I would like to be known. I shouldn't say what I'm known for. I'd like to be known as just being into the '90s JDM scene. Yeah, you I know, agree. Like that's yeah. And now I'm slowly moving towards the Porsches, but I was a BMW guy. For a while, mm-hmm. I was a Honda boy. I started off as a Honda boy. So when did you, when did you get to start with cars? Was so, it with Hondas? I'll tell you, uh, <laughs> I'm a Fast and Furious guy. So, so I was 15 years old when the Fast and Furious came out. Summer of when I was 15. Okay. And um, 2001? 2001. Yeah. And uh, my friends had older friend, older brothers. They were all terrible cars you know dodge <laughs> neons it was like acr neon jettas yeah. you know fast and furious made volkswagen's cool and they're not um you know the 90s jet yeah. uh, 90s volkswagen especially yeah. yeah that stuff's all trash but <laughs> the um so i'll just i'll just name names so my 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 uh, friends brothers had these cars and then uh, there was an older kid we'll call him who Went to school in Florida. He was in college, yeah. but he was from our area, and he was a Honda guy because he he was exposed to him because of Florida and his dad. His dad was a gangster Honda guy. Um, I actually bought my second Honda f- ever owned from his dad. He had CRXs. Oh, okay. So uh, his name was Chet, and he had a um, Paradise Green EG. I don't know if it was a VX or a CX, and it had a Del Sol VTEC engine, so B16. Right. No, a USDM B16. Mm-hmm. I think they only came in the Del Sol VTEC and then the the first gen GSR, but that was a B17 technically. Right, right. Um, and he, so he got it from a junkyard. He ended up hydrolocking it in Florida, one of the flash floods, and he put a Type R motor. So back then there was this local dude. He had an ACR Neon, mm-hmm. white with white wheels, and he was like the guy. No one ever really raced, but they, they just like fucked around and drove around like they were fast. Yeah. So... Chet, Chet was kind of arrogant, you know, cocky at times. He's like, that thing's junk. Let's race. And I remember I'm in like a car and they go by Troop E, which is a police station. And Chet has an Apexi World Sport and he's at like 8,000 RPM right by the police station. I'm like, this yeah. is sick. You know what I mean? Like, let's let's break some fucking laws. Yeah. So so I was 15, couldn't drive or anything. And I watched that race go down and it the, the neon might as well put it in reverse. You know what I mean? It was, <laughs> And we're talking maybe high 12 second cars back then, but that was fast in 01. Back that was, then, that yeah, was fast. So... I, I was I wanted a Volkswagen Golf because mm-hmm. of Fast and Furious, you right. know, Jesse's car. Everyone right. loved that. Yep. But uh, I worked at this this hotel and I used to wash the dishes and it was right near Lime Rock, so you'd see all like the Lime Rock cars come through. I remember one time an EG came through. It was painted like a baby blue and it had in te- it had Acura badges. It took me like a year to figure out that it wasn't even an a- you know it was yeah. a Honda. It just right. people did shit backwards yep. back then. So I got a CRX. I bought it from a local dude and it was built. So you said like everyone had their CX racing time. Yeah. I never I never had that. And I'm not bragging. I never did like the underglow thing. I never did like the tacky bullshit. I always was OEM plus in the beginning. Yeah. I had a CRX uh, with like KYB AGXs and like I forget what springs. Um, I had, I remember they had a, a Zenny, you know, like the, the Falcons. Yes. The RT215 was out okay. back then. That was like the hot street tire, you know, yeah, 200 yeah. treadwear. I had that on it on the stock wheels, had an exhaust, um, and the exhaust was painted black, like mm-hmm. being a little stealth intake, and that's it. I drove that car for a little bit, and then I um, clean engine bay. It was stock. Okay. Yeah, I mean it was it was clean. The car had like very little rust. You know, okay. I had like the little the little bubble in the quarter right, panel. Right, right, right. And then my second car was a Y forty nine CRX. Okay. Which, that's a yellow. It has a curse. So in, in the Honda game, the the Y forty nine curse is like they get stolen or crashed. Every Y49 CRX was getting crashed ah, heavy, okay. you know, and they were just getting wiped off the face. Um, I think it's called Barbados Yellow. Okay. Was what, it, was what the yellow was. So I had that and um, it actually had a ZC swap. So Ch- I bought it off Chet's dad. His, mm. his dad was f- tinkering with Hondas forever. He was a pilot um, and he knew what he was doing and he put a ZC swap, which is a dual cam D series, okay. non-VTEC. 
dual, dual cam, cam D, D series. series. Yeah, it came in like. Um, is that like an earlier like? Yeah, it's like it's like an early. It's like a late eighties, early nineties. Wow. Um, dual cam D series. Yeah, ZC. It's called. So, so it had one hundred and thirty horsepower, where the LS had like one forty. Right. It was a one point six liter, where the LS was a one eight. That, that right. was like that was right. it. It looked like a B series. Like what, if you, you saw know what the one, compression was on that, because LS usually has like a lower compression. <sighs> It was probably it was probably higher than an LS. That's how it made one thirty right, at point right. two uh, liters less. But it was it was curious. Fine. Yeah, question, yeah, no, yeah. it was it was a it was a fine setup. It had a little more torque. It was it was a little better, and mm -hmm. it looked cooler. And yeah. um, actually, the best way I can describe them is: Have you ever seen a CRX with a square bulge on the driver side, uh, JDM driver side, so the, the passenger side, just a perfect square bulge right in like. The right center of the hood. That's a that's a car yes, that came with a yes. ZC. I'm like, wait, wait bulge where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's a okay. car that came with a ZC because okay. it was that bulge just for the dual cam. Right, supposedly. exactly. It fit without doing that, but they Honda, you they know, just try to yeah. They just did their thing. I think the uh, the Eclipse has had the same similar yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, the Supra had like a Euro scoop. They had a right. bunch of weird stuff. But so I had the yellow car, and then I traded it and did and got a an EG with a 99 GSR engine. And mind you, this is 2000 two three 2003 ish Damn. yeah okay. so i had a 99 gsr engine with like twenty thousand miles the car paint was dusted it was like no uh clear coat yeah and chet had some autocross parts and i was like that was like my influence you know like he he was older there the internet kind of sucked back then and that was trash yeah it was I trash it was like windows 97 yeah it was. and it was like <laughs> dial up yeah you know? dial up there was no, i mean there were forums but they were garbage um they were so like super Craigslist. street magazine was probably like the only yeah, thing yeah I mean, even around, I mean, look around here. No one, no, no gas stations were getting Super Street, you know, like, yeah, and I was here, young right. and didn't have any money and didn't, didn't subscribe to that. But, uh, I got that, that Civic and I remember it, th I had it up until 04. So we'll fast forward to 04. My buddy had like one of the first STIs. Okay. So, um, Chet had some parts. He had some 13 by eight inch Kaiser wheels mm -hmm. with uh Kumo V seven tens. They're like mm. slicks, you know? Yeah. So I had them on all four of the, of the civic. The thing looked gnarly. It handled so well. My buddy got the STI. We raced, I walked him, and it was like, Oh shit. Like this little junk Honda, yeah. you know, beat that. Um, the old four, that was a, that was a, um, not the bug eye. It was the it was blah, uh, by. blah by first right. generation for the hawk eye. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. They were they were Those good looking popular, cars. Man. Yeah. I used to want that car as well. He blew that thing up at like twenty three hundred miles. I Dealer mean, covered it. Yeah. yeah. Subaru. <laughs> junk. More <laughs> junk. Uh -huh. It was cool though. I was I was into him. So that's actually that leads me into like when I got really really into the JDM. I mean I don't even want to say JDM, but the, that scene. Um, he had the STI. I was looking for one because mm -hmm. I really liked the car. Yeah. You know, not because it just handled well. It was just a nice car. And while looking for him, I found uh the an evo yes those are com those are com yeah. those are like the competitive. so i was like okay so my first before that i had a talon gsx okay and i uh, had a frank jr 19c on it was quick uh but it got crank walk and i blew the transmission at like the same time i remember it was like 2g yeah okay 2g uh it was a 95 i remember being like want to see my favorite thing to do like tell my buddy and he's like yeah and i just sidestepped the pedal and the car jumped 10 feet and just stopped, like didn't go anywhere. But oh, it was already experiencing crank walk. You know, right. the clutch was doing its weird stuff. So then I got the Evo. And I remember trying to get my mom to co-sign and she wouldn't, you know, and I was like, she's like, you're spending too much money. You're just going to keep spending money on that. And I'm like, no, I'm going to keep the stock, you know, because that's like a $500 <laughs> payment, yeah. you know, and she wouldn't co-sign. So I remember signing for that. I had a 17.9% interest rate. So you, you you went through with it. I got it myself, but dude, seventeen point nine. I think I paid five sixty five a month, and I bet you two hundred of that went to the principal. That's but if they bad, told me though. it was fifty percent, I probably would have walked out of there. Yeah. You know, nineteen twenty years old, like whatever. Don't I don't give a fuck. You know, so you got it though, man. I mean, I was in the same. Your story is like pretty similar. Cause, yeah. I mean, I, when I was I was on the website, dude, every day mm -hmm. trying to get my grandma to co-sign for the Evo. And I remember looking at it, it was like 30,000. Yeah. Yeah. Around there. Cheap. I bought mine with 5,000 miles. It was an 05 RS. Mm -hmm. I bought it with 5,000 miles, lightly used. Um, and it was $29,028. Wow. Yeah. They, they didn't really lose the their RS value. It was like the roll window, roll yeah. down windows. Crank okay. windows, front LSD, aluminum. You're just trying to get in the door. I know. I, I like, that's what I was about. Like that okay. car right there is an RS. That's an old, that's an Evo four RS. So that's like, okay. In my mind, I came from the Honda and like buddies had Volkswagens and, you know, neons, yeah. whatever. 
And the worst thing was when the power window stopped working, sunroof stopped working. So mm. I was like, I was like damaged from that. And I was like, no, I'd never have to deal with that. You know, I got crank windows. That's, that's, that's a valid reason though. I didn't think about but that. But it was bullshit because I bet you all the Evo windows work still today, you know? <laughs> but I remember um, everyone making fun of me. Be like, you spent 30 grand in the car's crank windows? I'm like, no, it's supposed to. You know, yeah. it was like in in the in the japan and stuff like that car came with steelies base model seats came with steelies. yeah that so the reason for the rs is so rally teams could buy them and build them that's what i thought it was the rs yeah. for yeah basically yeah. so they came with steelies they didn't come with brembos mm -hmm. they, they came with like shit seats like base right. model mirage or lancer yep. seats so i was into it um we got like a nicer rs obviously but yeah. i i was super into that and uh i did track days and had olins on it and i was super super into it and then kind of just evolved to where i'm at today how did you get into like the restoration like business because that's basically what you do right your, your yeah. earlier videos on youtube are documenting restoring yeah. cars so so i call it a time machine okay. right like i like the older cars but i hate junk and you go look at like a 96 evo mm -hmm. you know and it's junk people didn't take care of it you know things went down um so the restoration is can bring you back to day one Right. You know, that's the idea. So that's what, like, I always wanted to do that, but uh, didn't have the, the the means to do it. You know, I didn't have mm -hmm. a shop. I didn't, I didn't really know the processes. So basically, as I started YouTubing, I started discovering new process, like the zinc coating. I'd been powder coating. Everyone did wheels and stuff, but I've always done like subframes, like yeah. big metal, you know, pieces. Um, and then it just naturally, weirdly evolved. It wasn't like a conscious effort. You know, I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to have a restoration shop. It didn't go down like that. Yeah. I often call it like a spite shop because I did it out of spite because every shop, uh, you know, that I experienced had their down, had their, had mm -hmm. shitty things. You know, right. they you go to a performance shop and they'll use ugly Chinese P clips and, you know, just zip ties everywhere. And like yeah. it works, but taking that extra step is, is what sets us apart, I'd say. Right. You know, so through your experiences, you basically decided to start doing things the right way. Yeah. And kind of my definition of the right your way. Because right I'll way. look at some people's cars and they're like, no, this is really clean. And I'm like, I love picking it apart. Yeah. Like, I love that. That's more fun to me is like picking apart someone else's build, not to like insult them, but like sometimes I learn something, you know, right. and sometimes I hate stuff. Do so you ask? How, what, so give me, give me an example of like you picking, oh, like, is it, are you brutally honest? Yeah. I mean, that's all I am. No matter if you know the person or not. Yeah. I don't, I don't care. So what would you say? So here's the thing. I don't take anything personally. If you right. were to come into my shop and be like, oh, I don't like how you routed that hose or I don't, well, I'd just be like, oh, you're wrong. You know, and like move <laughs> on with my life. Okay. Like, you know, or, or you're right. Why the hell did we do that or mm -hmm. whatever? A lot of people take stuff personally. Yeah. Um, and I'm, that's not to say I'm not like defensive when it does happen. If there's a reason, right. You know, if I did it for a reason, I'll stand up for why I did it or whatever, but you're always learning, you mm -hmm. know, everything's about learning. And I want, I don't have an ego. I want the stuff to be the best. Yeah. I want my builds to be the best. I don't have an ego like they already are. Right. And I think that's a lot of people's problem is they're like, I'm already the shit. You can't tell me anything. Mm-hmm. But I, I like going to car shows and filming and saying like, this thing's a piece of shit. And I love when the person comes in the comments and is like, fuck you. Or sometimes they're like, it is a piece of shit. And then the negative to that is I get tons of DMs to roast my car. And that's not fun. I don't want you to ask for it. Yeah. You know? I want to do it because, and usually I want to do it when they're going for something, right? Okay. Like I, I don't want to like just someone have a piece of shit and I go, oh, there's a piece of shit. I mean, I'll do that too. Mm -hmm. But I would rather you're super prideful about your car and I get to say, this isn't clean because a lot of times I've had good response where people are like, fuck, you're right. You know, yeah. like, and they'll change stuff or, or whatever, but there's too many people right. are too sensitive. You know, I think a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into their car and sometimes that's all they have. So they kind of take it yeah. like, damn, I, this is all I, this is all I could afford. Right. So, you know, if, if you were judging my car, like, Shit, then I'm, I'm I might as well just sell my shit now at this point. Well, my argument is that, like if you can't afford to do it right, then yeah. you then don't fucking do it. I mean, I, I hate to say it like that, and a lot of people are gonna argue. Like I saw, I, I love this because I checked out your stuff before you came. Mm -hmm. so there was a conversation about rep wheels. Yeah, those guys can can fuck off. Though they don't <laughs> don't come at me with rep wheels. There's no XXR. That's all junk. It's fucking garbage. I don't care that Rota makes some OEM wheels. Mm -hmm. Like 
the, the rotas that are OEM, and I don't even remember what they are, but there are some rota yeah. like makes OEM wheels. Those are put through quality control that your slipstreams are not put through. Yeah, you know, and like they're put through crash testing or what whatever that your slipstreams are not put through. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the people in the UK and stuff will argue they pass Ma and Tuv or whatever T U V M O T. That's mm-hmm. their like. I I don't know if I'm saying it right. Someone will talk shit, but um, I still don't care. If you're knocking off another design, it looks like fluffier. You know, like the knockoff tees, they look yeah. a little fluffier, a little softer. It, yeah, that's junk. So what about that. so what about the partner companies? Because nowadays a lot of information is out there about companies that are partner. They have partner companies or like they have. Well, give me an example. Of what you mean? So um, let's say ESR. ESR. Okay. Right. Apparently, this is just from what I've heard. ESR mm-hmm. manufactures other other companies' wheels because they have. Sure. Right. I'm so, sure they do. So. To my knowledge, and I hope someone checks me because I like to learn. There's three forge forgeries. I don't I don't know what it, what the word is. There's three places in the whole world that pretty much forge wheels. Forge wheels, right? Some of them are in Taiwan. Some of them are in, one of them's in Taiwan. One of them's in Japan. I forget where the th- the third one is. It might also be China or something like that. Nothing in in U.S. L.A. area. Uh, or I don't like know. California? I don't know. I okay. mean, forging wheels is a is a it's a process. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's it's a it's a, it's gnarly. Um, to my not, I don't know, but like okay. to my knowledge, I knew of those three. And um, if you have, you know, if you're partnered with someone, and you make someone else's wheels. There's a good chance those are junk too. You know, it's not like, you know, if you follow Mackin or Raise, which Raise is Mac and all that Volk, mm-hmm. Graham Light, all those wheels. Yeah, they have lower cost wheels, like right, and it's all off the process, flow formed, and you know stuff like that. Yeah. But, but. uh there's they still junk, you know, or the, the other stuff still junk. Like ESR wheels, are, in my opinion, are fucking junk. <laughs> you know, I I, yeah. I wouldn't run those, and I don't like them. And they copy someone else's design, and they take money from that. So then that price ends up going up. I mean, I've watched Volks almost two and a half their price since I got in the game. You know, T's used to be two grand. Yeah, now I said T's are four man. grand. You know, and if you buy a set for a Supra, they're close to five. You know, those specs. That, it doesn't make sense, though, man. It, to me. it doesn't, but it does when you think that ESR is taking their design and taking money out of their mouth. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you have 10 companies making the same wheel, mm-hmm. well, you just, you didn't build a bigger audience. You split right. it 10 ways. Mm-hmm. So to think that these companies put in the R&D, were doing it in the 90s before it was easy to do. Like, I think that's super cool. Like Regas. You familiar with Regas? No. So Rega, oh, yes, Rega Master. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. They started off as a Russian tank company that retooled and made wheels. Okay. During the Cold War, after the Cold War. Right. So like a set of Rega Masters, I mean, you pick, I have some here. I'll, I'll let you pick them up. They're so light, but they're brittle, right. you know, and um, that's cool. Like that history is cool and it was hard to do. Yeah. And now it's not so hard to do. So it's like if you pop up with some bullshit wheel company, I it's it's not, I don't think it's cool. You know, yeah. just not into it. I mean, like that's what spoon, or I'm sorry, um, that's what Rota slips are. Yeah. So, uh, Rega made it from spoon. Mm-hmm. So the SW three eighty eights are just Rega masters. Okay. Yeah, they just made them for spoon. Like spoon, right. they make a bunch of stuff, but yeah. like I think their calipers are made by Nissan. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, stuff like that. They're just branded spoon. Right. But uh, so what about like Rotaform? I'm not into them. So, I'm not into any like. I don't know. I don't know if there's a place for rotiform. Like maybe on my Cayenne, there's like some cool rotiforms I could yeah. get, like something like that. They just don't belong on anything I own, you know? So I, I don't, I can't think of a car that I'm like, that needs a set of rotiforms. I've never said that in my life, <laughs> you know? It's funny because a lot of these companies, like I was saying, they come they come out and they're more like rep companies and they be, become a, a brand that people want to use on their cars. So yeah, how do that's you- That's the worst thing you can do for me because the moment you come out as a rep brand, I see you as that for the rest of my life. Mm. Even if you change your processes and do this, because it's also a lot of lying. There's a lot of dis- deception in that. You know, like there's there's coilover companies that don't own shock dynos. There's coilover companies that have three different names and make the same piece and make them different colors. That's you know? extremely common. So yeah, so it's like I think like Silver's, Godspeed, Fortune Auto are all pretty much the same coilover. Everyone thinks Fortune Autos are good. They're junk. Fortune Autos are junk. They're they're junk. They're made by the same people and they did good marketing Mm -hmm. and they price them where that's another thing that's really interesting is like you can sell a set of coil over 600 bucks and people like, Oh, that's a representation of their quality. Mm -hmm. So then if you go, well, these are 14 and you go, well, weird. 
species are a thousand and this is 1100 and yours are 14 in your head you're going that must be a better coilover yeah it's not the case they just marketed them well and made them expensive and you know i i don't i could go talk about that stuff all day but it's i like what i like and uh i really like period correct stuff and i like to modernize period correct stuff mm -hmm. i think that's super fun and I'm really into the rare stuff, not because of a flex. A lot of people think it's because of a flex. It's a chase. I yeah. think it's so much more fun to find a part sitting in somebody's shelf, you know, like all the stuff behind me and over there. It's all super old stuff. That license plate over there is from 1994. It was a dealer option from Taiwan. That is cool to me to go find, you know. That is actually dope. Yeah, that's a two thousand dollar license plate. It's, I like. I'm looking at it. It just gives me like Saved by the Bell. Yeah, it's like it's like <laughs> super. I think yeah. that's cool. And like I've got. 4G63 V cams that they made barely any of. I bought one from Malaysia and one from Ukraine. It's not fun to be able to go on like eBay and buy your and whole buy build it. and yeah. get. I mean, it is fun if that's what you like, but I like chasing the cool parts. Do you sell these parts? Um, Somebody wanted to buy these parts? Yeah, occasionally, but I, I I don't like have a business doing that. I'll just if I don't need it, like if I find something really rare, yeah, and then it sits on a shelf for two years, and I'm like, eh, maybe it's time to get rid of that five thousand right. dollar trinket you know <laughs> then sure but i don't i don't focus i don't buy it with the intent to flip it and i don't i pretty much buy everything with the intent to keep it for the rest of my life but i think a lot of people do that so even for skylines do you do you offer any type of uh like what what services do you offer for skylines if i wanted to build a skyline do you we do i mean we have i showed you the two complete yeah. painted cars mm -hmm. we do as much restoration as we can we don't do interiors I, I don't know how to do that. Um, mostly bays is what we're known for. Bays. We do a really clean bays, OEM or built. Mm -hmm. um, we don't build thousand horsepower cars. It's it. We could do it. I think anyone can do it with enough money. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not into it, and I think the chassis dictates the power. So, like you know, you see these underground racing Lambos destroying everyone, making two thousand horsepower. It's not an accident. It's because the chassis can take it. Right. Now you put 2,000 horsepower on a Viper and you don't win because it just spins all the way and it, yeah. it breaks or this happens. Each chassis has a sweet spot and right. I like finding that. And with the Skyline, it's like five to seven, five to 700 horsepower. That's not saying an 800 horsepower one isn't good and it's not saying a 400 horsepower one isn't good, but 500 in R32, six to seven in an R33, 34 is the sweet spot. So the R32s are probably, aren't, aren't those... Uh like th they hold the record for the fastest R32. Yeah, I mean, you could argue though that they that they're the cheapest. Mm -hmm. They they made the most of them. So there's forty four thousand R32s. Okay. There's, I want to say eighteen thousand thirty threes, and then there's eleven thousand thirty fours. So <laughs> if you were gonna numbers. buy a, a Skyline, yeah, you go for a thirty two, easier to find, cheaper. So in order to get one of those cars, right? What's the process? Because I know you, uh, you, you're you very familiar with the important process. Yeah, sure. so like that Evo came from the UK. I bought that in the UK. I drove that car to the Nürburgring, drove it on the Nürburgring. Wow, Imported, dude. yeah. Drove what? it from Liverpool, Manchester to to uh, the Nürburgring. Stopped at Hockenheim. It was like 11 hours. Drove over the English Channel in a boat. You know, Shit. it was cool. Um, and then my 32, I went to Japan, bought that. Uh, drove it in Japan, drove it to the boat, and then brought it in. It's the process is a lot easier than you think, but there is some red tape that you don't want to mess up. You know, just like no one's comfortable going to the DMV. You know, you go register a yeah. car. Imagine that with a car that doesn't belong here. It's a lot shittier, but it's easy. And importers make it even easier, but they they get their money. So now with the legal process, like since it, the cars are legal now, if you wanted to bring them in, uh, do you have to wait a certain amount of time for them? 25 years to the month. Well, not outside of the 25 years, I'm saying like, let's say if I wanted to buy a car in Japan, and ship it here how long would it take for me to get my car because you'd probably get quoted like three months three months yeah like that's i would say that's average i've gotten cars here in 45 days but like you can't you can't rush a boat you know and <laughs> and and the boat has to be full and you know there's a lot okay. of a lot of logistics to go with it if you've got enough money you can air freight it and put it on a plane you can have it the next day you probably spend twice the amount of money shipping it's about it 25 grand to ship a car on a plane and what about the boat? Oh, it's like two, maybe so a thousand. Two thousand to twenty-five thousand. Yeah, but if you got money and you're bringing in a thirty-four one, it's safer. It's it's quicker. I mean, you, how many boats you see tip over and you, there's shipping yeah. containers floating through the ocean? There's like know? that North Sea TikTok vibe. I don't know if you guys are, if you guys watching, know you anything watch about a that? Thirty-four bobbing and <laughs> yeah. bobbing in the ocean, you know. So, 
you spend two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars on a thirty four, and you have the money, you mm-hmm. put it on a fucking plane. The prices though, I they're insane now. Like I remember, like they came down a lot. The yen's tanked. The yen really. There was a time in twenty one, maybe, where the yen was. I'm gonna say one to one. Okay. Everyone knows what I mean by that, or should. Um, it's like point oh oh one to one or something. Mm-hmm. But um, usually the rule of thumb at that time was move the decimal place two points. So if you saw something for three thousand yen, let's say yeah. it was thirty bucks. Oh shit! You okay. know, so if something was a million yen, it was whatever a hundred grand or whatever right. that is. Um, now it's point oh oh. It the lowest it was point oh six seven. Now it's point oh six nine. So something that was a hundred thousand was a million yen. Now a million yen is six hundred or sixty nine thousand. So okay. you just save thirty yeah. percent just off the exchange rate, which was cool. Right. So a 34, that was 200 grand in 2022 or mm-hmm. whatever the height was. Let's just play. It was 2022 is a hundred and uh, what's that? 140 grand today. Yeah. Same car, same yen price. Right. But just from the exchange. And then on top of that, you had a lot of people buying and, and, and flooding the market. Mm-hmm. So 34s are, you can get a nice one for 130 grand. Now, 130, yeah. which is basically a little bit more than a brand new R35, right? That's, yeah, yeah. They're like 160, 115 around there. I don't know the R35. I know you can I spend 160, but yeah, yeah I'm sure. Sh- I think I think R35s when they first came out were like sub 100. Yeah, I remember like going into the dealership grand. and seeing it for like 116. I'm not sure, but I guess it depends yeah, on what. Yeah, it depends on the model. Yeah. Like Nismos or 160, you right, know, T-spec, right. whatever. But I mean, compared even better, uh, you can get. Uh, I mean, how much is a? How much was your Supra? Uh, 55, I think. It yeah, was. 55. And yeah. like your super would destroy an R34 in every single way. I don't care, man. I want to. No, be. of course, <laughs> of course. Well, like while we're comparing cars, like value dollar to dollar. Yeah. I mean, 130 on that, you can buy that Turbo S, you know, and, That's true. and also destroy it. And yeah. that, I mean, like the 34, that those will keep going up in value. Mm-hmm. 32s are very like f- up. In, I mean, 32s are now like 35 grand is what I'm seeing for the average. That's not bad. When I bought my first one, it was 17. 17. I paid 17,000 for it. What year first. was that? 2017. Okay. So that's what So I'm they saying. were legal for four or three years at that yeah. time. Yeah. But uh, the Skyline, like like what we were talking about before, mm-hmm. the Skyline, you know, RB26 versus 2JZ, it's it's not that for me. It's Skyline versus Supra. So uh, Mark Mark Four. Right. Mark Four. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So can you talk about the uh, the differences between the two in terms of like motors I mean, and, and techn the- like you know technically there's tons of differences obviously it's rb26 2.6 uh, two j's three liter i'm not gonna get into one j's and all that bullshit yeah, yeah, but yeah, right um the the two j is a sick engine mm-hmm. really cool engine it's proven it's proven and it it's works fast Toy- import toyota reliability yeah it's great but the supra is not the skyline in what sense in every sense, the Supra is a, a great car, mm-hmm. touring car, whatever. The kicker, like I told you before, the underground racing Lambos are able to do 2,000 horsepower. You make more than 500 horsepower in a Supra. I don't care what size tires you have, you're spinning. The beauty of the Skyline, you make 600 horsepower in an R32 and you get traction in first gear. And there's not a lot of cars where you get to feel getting traction in first gear at yeah. those power numbers. Right. You know, and they're robust. The transmissions are good for 800 horsepower. The The engine is pretty efficient. You know, mm-hmm. like a 500 horsepower R32 scares a lot of people. Like they're fun, they're fast, and depending on the conditions, you know, uh, at a drag strip, not that scary, but when you're hitting the gas through some of these back road corners at 500 yeah. horsepower, like puts you in your seat and the Supra can't do it. So I don't think it's a 2J versus RB thing because also swapping either engine into like an s chassis or something i think is dumb yeah um for me it's skyline versus supra and the skyline just better so when it comes to making power i know you don't really do high horsepower builds yeah but have you seen anything that has you know come across your 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 shop and maybe said like oh this is a more common thing with the rb26 oh issue wise yeah like i mean i don't know because i haven't seen a lot of issues with the supras and and the other thing that everyone's got to remember is like supra came out 93 they were they were expensive. Yeah. A Supra back then, I want to say, and someone can check me, for some reason, I remember $50,000 being the price tag 
1993. Actually, I mean, that's something we could look up, but pretty sure it's like forty to $50,000. In 1993, $50,000 is... I thought it was like 30K. No, the FD... I had an FD with the original sticker and it was like 34000 for a touring RX-7. Oh, RX-7. No, no, but I'm saying like the oh. Supra it was 50 grand. I want to say it was like 45K was like... Um, yeah, check it. At the time though, so at the time when this car came out though, what I always wondered was who, what kind of people were purchasing these cars? So the, I mean, I don't know. I, it was like, you know, it was like, um, business, business, like, well, no, it was, it was touchy, right? Cause back then everyone was real American. You know what I mean? They were yeah. real American in 1993. You didn't go buy a Supra. You bought a goddamn C4 Corvette or whatever. Yeah. Did you see 30, that? It says 39, but that's not probably like a NA a, auto. Exactly. 39. Yes. A, a, a TT Supra. I would Twin bet. Turbos, yeah. It's probably around. Yeah. Exactly yeah. Probably said. 50 K. That's probably like um, a base one. NA. Yeah. So, I mean, 50 K in 93, I'd love to also see that math is big money today. Yeah. You know, you're talking M4, like brand new M4, probably equivalent. Right. Right. And the Supra would kill the M3 back then, you know, in, in 93. Let's get, let's call it 95 just to make it easy. Mm -hmm. It would kill the M3. It would kill the Corvettes. I mean, it would, there probably wasn't a lot of cars that came to the U S that. What about the, um, 300 ZX? What about it? It's probably, uh, that's probably like in the same. Yeah. They were probably like they 300 ZX FD mm -hmm. Supra. I mean, but those cars are known to be slow. I feel like three hundred GX. No, a Supra is like out of out of the factory. That's what I'm saying. If we're talking about at the time, it may be different. That's what I'm saying. Go drive a 1994 Corvette. Okay. And you'll go. Oh, that Supra is lightning fast. You yeah. know, three thousand GT. Those cars were so much faster than the American counterparts. Mm -hmm. The R32 was beating F40s and Porsche 959s on the track, and in, in in you know back in those days in '94. Right. So they were the king. You know, they were the kings. Yeah. And, and and they're cool. But I, I'd still say Skyline is the best because it can take it. My 32 is 275 squared. My 33 is 295 squared. Mm -hmm. Not a large feat today. Yeah. In in the nineties, the wheel wells were smaller. The right. the di you know, the 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 diameter or the um what is it? The circumference of the wheel wells were smaller. They fit smaller wheels, everything there were no nothing came with eighteens. Yeah. You know? So it was like that is gnarly that an R33 from 1995 can fit a 295 squared and with that can take 800 horsepower and with that can make it. Mm -hmm. You know, like 3000 GT, piece of shit. <laughs> piece of shit. You, <laughs> you don't see those anymore. And if you do, I feel like they're always, there's always something like they're always in the shop or something's being wrong. They have like fixed. that front wheel bias yeah, drive yeah, yeah. train set. They're mm -hmm. just fucking garbage. And they're, but, I had their pain to work on too. Dude, they're tiny inside and yeah. they weigh 3,800 pounds. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's one of the worst legends. I don't even know if it counts as, as one of the... I think it's just rare now. Yeah, they're rare. I mean, but who's, 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 who's done something with that car? That A lot. I mean, there's some fast ones out there, but like... But do you hear about them now? Like, Yeah, I mean, like, I think one one Cletus is like uh, mm. Cletus's thing. You know, like, they're out there, but um, where I was going with that was like back in the, in the 90s, like the Supra being 50K... They were a nice car. They yeah. were taken care of. Right. You don't, not a lot of people bought fifty thousand dollars cars in the nineties and just let them go to shit. Yeah. You know. So, um, I think uh, I I just think chassis versus chassis. The Skyline's way better. It can put it down. I agree it with can, that. It can do all I that. Agree. It it can. You can road race it. You can do it with a Supra. Don't get me wrong. But like, you could road race it. You could mm -hmm. drag race it. You could you do everything. Right. You know, and you could put it down. I'm telling you, when you feel first and second gear in a straight six twin turbo 90s car it's different really? where in the super you're just not even going to hit the gas yeah you make 600 horsepower in a supra in second gear you're just lighting the tires up, which is fun yeah but it's not the same you know so with the the r32 were they were, were the skylines always big on electronics and like yeah they were like technologically advanced, advanced. for the time they had like hikus which is rear steering the atessa okay. system is still used in the r35 today so the atessa is their all-wheel drive system and what it does is it uses the tps and the abs sensors to um allow power to the front wheels so their rear bias okay you can drift a bone stock r32 you know the front wheels don't don't stop that um but uh it works in like a slave master hydraulic kind of scenario okay and there's an electronic pump that pumps the back of what i call slave but it's a hikus actuator and it pushes 
like a fork, just like your clutch has. Yeah. And that engages the diff in, or the, the, the center diff into the front drive shaft and pushes the front drive shaft to mesh um, with the front diff. So the front diff is in the oil pan. Uh, it's attached to the side, kind of like BMWs, okay. like the X, the yeah. XIs or whatever. Um, it's a gnarly system. So what it, is it like a 80, 20 split? You, they're adjustable. Like we can, we can modify them to be adjustable factory. I don't think or it's 64, like that. I, I want to say it depends on the power level. That's another okay. crazy thing. Okay. So they have a gauge that says torque It's a torque gauge, but it, it just tells you how much power you have going to the front. And it's, mm -hmm. It's like a voltage based thing, but um, the more power you have, the more you'll excite that gauge. So a stock car will only get that thing to barely move. You make 500 horsepower and that thing's moving a lot more. Yeah. So it's it's a cool system and it's really strong. Right. You know, like R35s are still using a similar system today. Yeah. I think that um, with the newer R35s though, the only issue that they're having is uh, like racing or the transmissions racing from a dig if you're making high horsepower. Yeah, they break. Um, yeah, that's it's a PCT. heavy car. Yeah, and it's also it's, a heavy car. It's a heavy car, and that that's what kills drivetrain parts. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what kills motors. Even I'll I'll tell people that all day. People yeah. don't really grasp that as like that load that you're putting on the engine mm -hmm. is is dependent. And like you could take a Miata and put an SR20 in it, and the six speed is glass. Everyone says, and you probably would never break it. But you put that six speed into a 240 or or bigger yeah that six speed is getting a lot more stress from the weight and the tires and you know whatever else right so i'd say the r35 thing is uh i don't know it's a flaw those cars are so heavy but they're like 3000 gt weight which is even crazier to think everyone thinks r35 is heavy and the 3000 gt is heavy mm -hmm. but if you think of the time difference the 3000 gt was really heavy for its time it, yeah. ma it makes it even worse right you built that same car today probably 5000 pounds because of the safety features and all that other shit right, so right. generally speaking the r35 is kind of light for the drivetrain it has and the size it is and all that stuff and then you're looking like hellcats and shit you There's might as well be driving yeah. an suv you know <laughs> the way, there are boats they're, yeah, they're, they're yeah. boats so do you think that when the r35 came out were you uh disappointed with it because of how different it was or because, no i just know? it was out of my price range and i okay. wasn't a skyline guy so okay. I was never a Skyline guy. I was an Evo guy. I was right. an Evo and RX-7 guy. And I remember I test drove my first Skyline. Vistec in Stanford had mm -hmm. a Skyline. And I remember I had like 25 grand cash in my hoodie. And I was like, it's time. I'm going to go buy a Skyline. Yeah. Test drove it, got onto the highway. It was the first right-hand drive car I'd driven on the United States. And like looking in the mirror, I got all messed up. Did you film this? No. Okay. Maybe, maybe actually, maybe there's a video of it. Um, Where but, was it? Where'd you pick it up from? Vistec. Right. Okay. In Stamford. They're like right on the New York okay. border. Um, maybe I filmed it. I don't know if I filmed my first drive, but I'll tell you I went home and bought another RX seven that day. <laughs> I didn't I didn't buy the Skyline. So oh, no, I, I didn't okay. film it. So it was pre YouTube. And then when I when I made money with YouTube, my first car was the R thirty two GTR. And I knew nothing. That was six years ago. You knew nothing about the Skyline platform. Nothing. Wow. I never researched them. I'm a freak. Like I call it bench building. I bench build every car. Okay. Like, so I had an MR2 build, you know, like if I bought one, if you want to build one today, I could help you pretty decently yeah. with my past knowledge of bench building them and researching okay. them. The Skyline, I never did it because I was like, oh, that's never going to be here. I didn't know about 25 year rule. I didn't do nothing. I was way behind and I was focused on FDs and Evos. Yeah. Um. So I bought my first 32 and didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. And then worked with my buddy Jack down at HP Logic. I didn't know him. He saw me on YouTube. Jack's watched the whole evolution of my brain with Skylines, but he was like super helpful in the beginning. Right. And then just reading and seeing other people's setups and stuff, I came up with what we now do. But the the Skyline's awesome. The Sky it's, so it's were awesome. there forums that you were, you were jumping on no, as well? No, forums were like dead around then. You know, okay. forums were dying. Facebook groups were doing better, but Facebook groups are useless for actual information. Right. And... I'll talk shit to the Australians. They're terrible at documenting stuff. I mean, countless times you'll go like, I'm having a problem with my Skyline. Let me Google it. Yeah. And you'll get a SAU, which is like a Skyline forum in Australia. Yeah. And it'll be like, they're having the exact same problem. And you're like, okay, I'm good. Three replies and just fades. Like no one ever That's... gets to the completion. No one ever answers the question. You're just like, fuck. Like, and it's the Australians. They just... I don't know. They're very separate people, I think. I don't think they help each other. Like in, in the US, I remember I had the Evo... If I want to know the weight of the dome light, there was yeah. a, there was a thread like how much each oh, fucking yeah. thing weighs, how mm -hmm. to take weight out. 
There's none of that for Skylines. And there never will be, I don't think, because now forums are dead. Yeah. So there'll never be reference material. So that's another part of the YouTube that I tried to focus on is like being able to be referenced. But yeah. because of the algorithm and the way it works, you can't title things that are searchable. Yeah. Oh, this like couldn't believe this happened. And it's like a real real issue that you could never pinpoint unless right. I did a really good job of like with the description and stuff. Forms are only relevant with the newer cars. Sure. Like Supra, they're super forms now sure. because it's a new platform. So people want to get on there and right. kind of, but who knows? I think it, I think if it's not a newer car, then yeah, it's, it's, it's always a dying it's thing. Bad. So what's a Supra form? Um, super, uh, MKV. I think it's super MKV. Okay. Um, there's two of them, but I know like the Porsche forums are, pretty good still yeah i mean um, i feel like that's never gonna die out though because no. this porsche is like porsche bmw yeah porsche bmw those those are they've got money be. right they spend it and they're super into cars it's crazy because like with australia they're they're known for having like the fastest skylines no mm -hmm. so why wouldn't they have some type of database or some type of well i'm starting to realize kind of now like if i give away all my problems i've solved yeah and it costs me money to solve and it cost me time and I paid guys to do it. Should I give that shit away for free? True. You know, like, should I solve a problem for you because you're a Skyline guy? And I, I'm going to say this and it's like, it's it's not how I feel, but like, should I care about the community? Should I? Like, is it in my best interest to care about the community? I, I don't know. It's like a question I truly have because we just solved a crazy problem with, it wasn't really Skyline specific, but it was a part that's used in Skylines and... It didn't make any sense and we solved it and I had to like really sit back and be like, do I tell the world this or do I just let other people find out? Because it cost me five grand to solve it. Yeah. And like if you were to do that mod and your car were to have problems, you'd have to come here if you want to solve it, you know, and I could probably talk about that. It's a problem, but I couldn't say how to solve it or what it is. And then then it comes off really like dick teasy, you know, where I'm like, mm. yeah, you know that problem you're having? I solved it. And, it, and now there's a paywall, <laughs> you know, so. It's uh, it's weird being the shop side of that. And yeah. it probably is why Australia, there's no information. That's right. what I came to the conclusion is less people build their own car in Australia. A lot of shops do it. There's big shops that do the car builds in Australia. Mm -hmm. and they probably don't want to tell you how to solve every little problem because it's their it's their intellectual property. They paid to do it. You know, yeah. it goes back to the rep thing. You know, like I designed this wheel, you stole it fuck you it's like it, you can apply that to every part of the right part of the build and so i don't know i, I don't i don't know it's 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 tough that whole that whole side of it the shop side of it's tough right it becomes more of like i think people get really upset about the gatekeeping mm -hmm. um, i call myself yeah. the jdm gatekeeper okay you know? i just like jokingly but yeah. like i do like i think it's funny i think it's i think it's fitting because there is things where i'm just like if you don't know you don't know i yeah. had to learn the hard way or read hundreds of hours of other people's posts that went nowhere mm -hmm. and it's part of it and that's what makes it fun like, like it brings me back to like the chase yeah. solving the problem is fun like there's no better feeling than when you break a exhaust stud in the head and weld a nut to it and get it out you know yeah. and like apply that to everything there's no better feeling than solving your problem whether it's finding the part fixing the part you know whatever it is mm -hmm. that's what makes the build fun not being the fastest white supra on a tuesday like that's right. not the funnest part because that <laughs> only microphone. lasts for 30 seconds before the the next guy does it you yeah know? so i think that like that side of my passion is why we have so many customers mm -hmm. that like what we're doing is i i do this to see it done right i do it with a theme it all makes sense it right. all has purpose and i try to simplify the process so mm -hmm. that at the end of the day it's serviceable. You know, we have customers in California that I don't want them to go to another shop because something broke. Yeah. Because things break, you know, but they go to another shop and then the shop's able to pick apart every little thing we did and not pick it apart in a negative way, like take fucking notes. You know, I'd rather their car stay on the road without needing that, you mm -hmm. know, that step. So it's uh, it's definitely weird. So you've had some 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 drifting videos. So I don't drift at all. Okay. Um, I can drift. Right. And it was the most fun part was being anti-drift. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite things to do is being against something, but be good at it or be okay at it or okay. be able to do it. Because if you are a hate, that's what makes a hater, right? A yeah. hater is someone who talks shit about something they can't do. Mm. I don't want to be a hater. I'd rather, you know, talk shit. And so like, I hate Miatas. 
So I built a K24 ITB right, Gangster yeah. Miata. I did that so I can go, no, confirmed. They, they'll suck. You know, and like, <laughs> granted, there was some issues with that, with that thought process, but like, same thing, you know, I, I don't enjoy drifting. I think drifting really hurt the car game for a lot of years. Really? I mean, it took a lot of people away. Dude, there's not another part of the sport where it looks cheap to get in because double what it should, right? Like drifting looks cheap. I'll buy this 240 for two grand. Oh, I'll do yeah. that. Next thing you know, you're... 10 grand or 20 grand or 30 grand deep and you're spending 1500 bucks on a weekend to go drifting yeah or if you go to the drag strip it's some fuel mm -hmm. you know maybe a set of tires and no tires yeah yeah that, yeah um or if you go to a road course day it's some brake pads and some mm -hmm. tires and then possibly if you crash but like drifting you know you rip your bumper off you crash you're risking a lot yeah. i don't want to say you're risking a lot more but you're yeah you kind of yeah, are you're putting yourself out there <laughs> yeah. and but it looks the cost of entry looks cheaper Mm -hmm. but how many people do you know that start with a drift car that's cheap and stay with that for 10 years they're always like right. 2j 500 horsepower then the car the quick change and all this stuff it's fucking it's boring and yeah. it's giving excuses for the idiots to build shit that's what i say right you have like mm. these idiots that are like oh it's just a drift car self tappers through here and you know that's why i love adam I mean, that's why adam lz is one of my favorite people because he'll paint he'll go to a drift event fuck up a bumper he'll be painted on monday you know, he's right. got the means to do it, but he yeah. does it. He's not like, oh, well, I'll wait till that crash it again, you know? And the, yeah. that if everyone was like that, I'd probably respect drifting a little bit more. But I think drifting's kind of... On any level you're saying, though, or this is just like on an entry level? I just hate drifting. Period. Yeah, like, but I but I can do it. Okay. So, like, I um I had a 270R. It's a, It was a mm -hmm. really rare S14. Okay. And I made a video drifting my rarest car, most expensive car or something. The car, $80,000, 240. Mm-hmm. And I linked uh, English Town, which is like a pro pro am track, right? Without angle, without an e brake, you know. Like uh, I linked the whole track, and it was just more. It was so much more fun to do it like that than if you had a fully built drift car. Yeah. Because then I bought a 350Z to to drift with my friends, and like did angle and did a hydro, and it felt like cheating. It was so easy. I can't tandem. I'll, I'll be the. I'm scared to tandem. I don't want to fuck up. <laughs> it's not because of me. I don't want to fuck up someone else's car. Yeah, that's you know, the worst I, part I don't, about I it. Yeah. I do never want to be responsible for someone else's too. car. Mm -hmm. But a 350Z with a welded diff, an angle kit, and a hydro is very simple car to drift. Really? You know, oh my god! If I I could throw you in one, and if you have a little bit of car control, you know, feel it out. Yeah, you, yeah. You'd, you'd get it pretty quick. That's the car I wanted to get to, to drift with, but um, yeah, like you said, it's still an expensive yeah hobby yeah you it know is. it's not cheap it's not something like oh i'm gonna go to the track today like now you gotta have tires yeah um so when you when you built this drift car the first one you built oh like i had a 270r bone stock car had okay. an lsd i drifted english town with that i thought it was interesting mm -hmm. and then everyone was doing 350z's and i was like well i, w I don't want to be left out so yeah. i'll get a 370z and um that was like 2020 it was like three years ago mm -hmm. two years ago but i learned how to like car how to do car control in like snowy parking lots you mm -hmm. know and like track days and right. you know that kind of stuff so i started off with the honda got went front wheel drive yeah got the evo went all wheel drive and i learned how to trail brake and rotate the evos and then um had fds which terrible drift cars but they're, they're super good grip cars and i learned you know a little bit of sliding and then right. it, it, it it didn't there was never a point where i went from not knowing at all what i was doing to being okay at it it was like the first time I, I remember I was with Adam and he's like, drift my 350Z. And that was the first time I ever pulled a hydraulic e-brake. That was the first time I ever transitioned. So that was another thing. You get on the street, you do a hero drift where you just slide and then you yeah, end up yeah, straight yeah. up and driving away. When you go the other way, that's when shit gets real. You know, ah, like when you have to transition, transition in the other way. Right. So, the, I mean, that's all on YouTube. I did. I pulled the handbrake and it felt like second nature. Mm -hmm. I never pulled a handbrake in my life. And it was like, okay, like got to transition. Just you could watch it in the video. I just grab yeah. it and do what I'm supposed to and link the track. And right. Adam's all stoked. And then we went to Scotland and I drifted at Driftland in a bone stock E36 with some cut knuckles and a welded diff. And I was like, you know, linking that track. And yeah. it was really fun at that level. Like, I won't talk shit about drifting at that level. I more talk shit about what it did to the car scene. Right. You know, it's like, it's like to me, it's like what people are seeing takeovers doing now. Yes. And I, yeah. I, not quite as bad, mm -hmm. but it was like clean cars are out. You know, I got in when it was like the missile time when everyone was just building piece of shit missiles. And right. I just hated that. 
you know, but I, I see it now. It was it was a tool to learn and right. not not lose a bunch of money, but I just wasn't into that. You know, I think. Do you think that the um, like, well, Miatas, I guess, kind of ruined it as well. Miatas are the worst car in the world. I think they're they're. I don't think they ruin drifting. I think they're terrible drift cars. So if you drift them, you're just dumb. Yeah. You know, um, they're good like entry level road race cars. They're good carry speed cars. They're mm-hmm. good for hairdressers, women. They're a real woman car. You know? <laughs> he I, mean, said it. I hate them. I love the Endique's kind of cool. Like the newest one is a like kind of a cool car, and I, I appreciate that Mazda built this. I, mean, I don't even want to call it a sports car, but like yeah. they built this little Econo sports car. Um, but then like. The Miata people are just, you know, don't even get me started. They're just <laughs> junk. They're the worst. They're not cool. They're not interesting. There's no rare parts. Like there's no mm-hmm. fun. You know, they're not fun. They're 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 okay to drive, yeah. but people take them too seriously, and they're junk. Yeah, when I was looking at S2000s, it was that it was the uh, Miata and the S. This is like before I even yeah, knew yeah. anything. Sure. And I'm just like started looking at the car and what it could do. And I'm just like, nah, that's something about that car. This doesn't really intrigue me. Yeah. It's like, like I said, it's a, if you did, if you just want to do like high performance driving education yeah. things, like sure, go get yourself an ND Miata, mm-hmm. have a blast, you yeah. know, and like do your thing. But I heard uh, it's a fun car to drive though. Yeah. I mean, it can be. I've had yeah. fun in Miatas before, but it's not fun that I could only have in a Miata. Right. You know, like you can have the same fun in an FD or an S2000. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'd have more fun in those cars. Like oh, the S2000, S2000, fun cars. I mean, they're a little sketchy, you know, but <laughs> like, especially mine, yeah. in the rain. Yes, that's yeah, those exactly. Those cars are terrifying. That's why I crash rain. mine, exactly. Yeah. Miatas are too. They can be, but right. the S2000 has a little more power. Can spin the wheels. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, you watch that Supra too. Those are those. Can, those look They're like snappy. they can. Yeah, They're they look like they snap back real quick. They are very similar feel to the, to the S2000. Yeah. Um, when you were building motors or doing restorations, did you have had you have any uh, SR20s or any? Uh, yeah. So KAs? we. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna sound lame, but like I remember back in like 2000, I don't know, 11 or 12, I had a 240 on a USDM 240. Uh huh. It was red. I bought it from this kid, Kyle. Um, had cool wheels. Had some brid seats in it. Mm-hmm. Intake exhaust, whatever. Brid. Brid, yeah. See, that's another one. Yeah, Koki. That's another one. Koki. <laughs> brid. Uh, so it was a Koki. So that what people call kooky. It was a, it was a uh-huh. later year, 240. Yeah. And I remember driving like through Waterbury. Uh, and it just like some street lights, some A bunch. They call it the mix master. A bunch of roads connect there. And mm-hmm. you can kind of like be underneath another road. Yeah. And I remember just being like, this feels so right. It just feels so cool. Like yeah. what I'm doing. And uh, I had some SRs and I built some SRs. And um, if you're going to ask SR versus KA, the KA is a piece of shit. It's a truck engine. It's the worst thing that's ever happened to... That's not what I was expecting you to cover. I with that hate one. KA24. <laughs> I that's thought you were going to start talking about the pros of it. All right. So, no, okay, so KA, right? The truck. You want to make some power, right? It's cast iron as opposed to SR20, which is aluminum, right? Blocks. So you want to make some power. Like describe why I would want to do that what with about, a 240 and the original piece of shit truck motor that comes in it. So what about, what about the head? You think about I the think head? the head is junk. I'm pretty sure the head in the K is junk. The only thing it has going for it is it's an iron block. There's really hard to find parts because they weren't anywhere else in the world. Mm-hmm. So most of the parts you're going to find today are some Mishimoto CX racing bullshit um, because the rest of the world, they, were, they didn't support it because there was no reason to. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to find old HKS stuff for a K. Okay. You're not going to find any of that. So what you're going to find is american companies that tried i think tomei usa came with like a came out with a line recently like in the last five years but yeah. but uh the k is a piece of shit it's ugly it's it's a distributor you know it's, it's just it's junk i think yeah. it's junk it's but it's a big four cylinder it's iron right if you want to make power with a 240 you put an rb in it or you put a 2j in it and you know in my opinion if you want to have a nice balanced 240 you put an sr in it mm-hmm. i don't think I don't think there's any space for it because you have a heavy four cylinder that doesn't make shift or power unless you turbo it and they're, they're on a timer then. So you like get the negatives of a six cylinder, yeah. you know, kind of. It's a little lighter with none of the positives of having a four cylinder in that. Mm. So if you want to go light and balanced and, and, and fun handling car, keep right. the SR. If you want to ruin it, you go RB, <laughs> you know, you want to ruin the handling and yeah. they don't fit, you know, 
How heavy are the KAs? I heard they were. I heard from. Um, I want to say they're like seventy pounds or eighty pounds more than an SR. But in general, overall across the board, like heavy. Those, they're extremely heavy. heavy I right? mean, so are the RBs, so are the two Js. You know, like those right. those are fucking so heavy. Do you know if the RBs are longer than the um the two Js? Um, I, they. I want to say they're like the same. same. They're pretty same. similar. So there was a there was a build that Jimmy Oaks had. He had the red Honda Civic mm -hmm. with what, the it KA. Was, it was a KA in there. Yeah, it was okay. a, it was a 240 engine. Okay, I thought it was for some reason I was like I, I thought it was an RB26, but I was like no, 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 he did a he did a that 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 build's crazy. It's goofy. I mm -hmm. see him for it. I would never do it. I call it a YouTube build. And yeah. Like I would tell Jimmy this. Me and Jimmy are close enough. I call it a YouTube build. No one in their right mind would ever desire that car. No one's ever just sitting at home like really like to take an EK coupe and put a truck motor and you know make it rear wheel drive. Like that's absurd. It's a YouTube build. It worked. It works. It's cool in its own right. I don't know if there's another person that desires that car. I think he just had a bunch of parts and yeah. like was like, I can do this. And then he did it and he, he did it, you know, but that's a YouTube build. That's dumb. I would, I don't know. I like that. I like that. I thought it was unique. A lot of people like that. So that is like, you know, that's mm -hmm. opinion, I guess. That, that's that's oh, of course. Where, I mean, that's my problem. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a, I'm it's not my car. Yeah. But. Yeah. No, I mean, it's unique, yeah. but things are unique usually for a reason. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, why the fuck did he do that? <laughs> like, why the fuck did he do that? It's funny to see a Civic drifting around, though. Like, I see him that's for that. why yeah, I think yeah. it's cool. Cause but I, that's why it's a, that's why I call it like a YouTube. It's a spectacle. OK. Right. Gotcha. Like, you're not going to be like, I'm going to the road course. I'm going to a drag race. I'm going to the, I'm going to a drift. You know, you're not going to do that. It's, it's, yeah. it's a a show car. And I don't mean it like for like parking in a parking lot. It's like it's like to get people to scratch their heads and engagement. And it's a YouTube build. Yeah, it and caught it, my it pulls, attention. <laughs> caught a lot. Caught, yeah, that popped Jimmy off pretty good. That build, I yeah, think dude. it did really well. So for him. unique. Yeah, so dope. And it's cool to see that he could do it. Right. Um, but it'd be cooler to me if he did like a K twenty four, like okay. a Honda engine Honda. in rear wheel drive Which form. Like, that would be cool. You yeah, know? everyone's or, doing the all wheel drive stuff now too. Yeah, well. yeah. So that'd be that'd be pretty dope. To he see. did like an S thirteen rear subframe in that. Which is, I don't know if if you've ever have any skills of doing that. That is more. Uh, gnarly than the engine, in my opinion, is that he got the rear subframe into that car. Yeah. You know, right. it, it's an S13 underneath. Yeah. You know, which is, it's nuts. It's pretty impressive. That car is nuts. And it's funny, like, see the camera in the engine bay and people at car shows, like, come up. And like, that was the coolest one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, that, that was fun. But like I said, I call that YouTube build. So speaking on YouTube builds, right? Um, well, not no, not to disrespect anybody, but um, TJ Hunt is the most popular, one of the most popular uh, car guys. Sure. Right? And you, you work with him on his. Yeah, we we R34. built his thirty four. Yeah. Right. So can you talk about the process with that and like how how you guys? Because I I didn't even know he was out here. Oh yeah. Um. So I don't really even know how it happened. Like how it you was, guys kind of connected. And did, I've known TJ since before that. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, I don't know how it happened. He, we had built Dustin Williams' car. Right. We built Hertz' car. Um. We built a couple cars and he was like, oh, I'm thinking about Skyline. And I was like, get one. You know, mm -hmm. like I told him I'd build it for him, whatever. And then one day he hits me up. And he's like, I got one. And that was pretty much it. That was that. That's when it started. And um, TJ was cool because he, he didn't really have a budget. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't like a million dollars, but he was like, I want to make I want to have one Skyline. I want to make it great. You know, right. and so that car got a two eight. Uh, and it was pretty much that engine right there. It's pretty much the same setup as what TJ has. Wow. It's good for like 630, 630 all wheel. What does this cost, dude? So that engine's about $45,000 just for the long block, nothing bolted to it. So as is, it's not 45K. This is more than 45K. Yeah, because right like the turbos, the manifolds, I mean, right. the intake manifold, the accessories, but like just a long block, like bare long block, yeah. 40, 45, 46,000 MSRP. What? So that's an HKS 2.8, brand new 24U block, which is mm -hmm. the N1 engine. And N one block, it's a little okay. stronger, higher nickel content. Um, brand new head, everything's brand new in it. ARP bolts and um, mild porting in the head. Uh, so two eight V cam, which is variable cam timing. Right. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, just some just some little proprietary parts. Mm -hmm. HKS oil pump. It doesn't come with the oil pan. You have to reuse your original one. Okay. But that's a rear wheel drive oil pan that's on there. Um, and that just has a pedigree. It has a number. Like that's a numbered engine from HKS. So like 
I could build that exact same engine with like you if you had a Skyline with your engine, yeah. it just wouldn't have the HKS number. Okay. You know, the proprietary things, but right. I have all the specs to it and we could copy it all day. Are they actually still manufacturing these? Yeah, just yeah. Like, yeah, they really. Do. So um I forget when, but we've had four of those come through the shop. Yeah. So what? we've built TJ's car has one now. It didn't yeah. originally. He money shifted the car and blew the engine. I saw that. I saw yeah. that, yeah. Um or he maybe didn't blow the engine, but did he, he keep that and or he bought the other he bought another motor? He bought the other crate motor for me. I had two gotcha. of those. One okay. for my thirty two, which was out front, one for my thirty three and I decided like my 32 didn't need that mm -hmm. kind of money into it. So I sold him that and that's for my 33. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so he blew it up. He blew up the one we had, we built for him because he money shifted or he damaged it or he mm -hmm. hurt something. And then he bought a crate motor. Uh, but yeah, they're about 45 grand. They go up to, we just purchased one for a customer. Um, it's the RB 30 version. So mm -hmm. it's a three liter. That was $74,000. That's yeah. just the motor alone. Exactly. Same thing you're looking at right there, minus the accessories. Yeah. But it's an RB30. It has these crazy, like, screw-on pistons. Yeah. Because the they didn't want to change the deck height. So okay. the only way to do that was to move the wrist pin up into the piston. And the only way to do that was to assemble it. And then the last piece is you screw the piston top on. So it's like a oh, big... Shit, yeah, it's crazy. crazy. And it's so the wrist pin is, like, high enough in the piston to not have to raise the height of the deck. What? Yeah. It's pretty cool. So we've never had one of those, but that'll that'll be like this summer. We'll be building that car. Mm -hmm. And are so are you doing any other like ex, like any plans for that? Like for his build at all? For who? TJ's? Yeah. No, like I like to get them done and them work. You know, right. unfortunately he hurt his, but now it's back together. And he, I was talking the other day. He dailies the thing. Yeah. You know, dailies and midnight purple two R thirty four. Right. Um, we built Adams R thirty two. Sim exact same setup except mm -hmm. we went single HKS turbo on that. Um, at, and that's Adam's favorite car, you yeah. know, and like, that's what I love. I love to like not prove myself, but be like, here you go. Let me yeah. know what you think. And everything works and it does it exactly how it's supposed to. TJ, super happy. Adam, super happy. Hurt's car is coming back. Uh, he started having some issues because of the age of his motor. We didn't touch his engine. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to do a two eight in Hertz car okay. this, this spring. Yeah. Um, we did Dustin Williams car. We did Larry Chen's car. Right. We did a 2.8 so, in that. We yeah. came here and it had low compression um, in one of the cylinders. It still ran okay, but we heard, you know, you can hear it at idle. Right. And we did a 2.8, a little smaller turbo. Larry loves that thing. <laughs> so it's fun. I mean, it's fun. I love doing the YouTuber cars because you hear all these shops and, you know, who's better, who's this. I'm not trying. I don't, like I said, I don't have an ego. Yeah. And it, people can build faster cars. People can probably build better. Like who knows? But at the end of the day, my cars are out there, out there, you know being seen by all doing what they're supposed to do. Right. And that, and, and that is, that's enough validation for me. I don't, you know, I don't need to be the loudest guy going, no, we're better. Like, I don't need to say that. I don't want right. to say that. I don't even think that I just, TJ, you're happy. Cool. Adam, yeah. you're happy. Cool. Like, that's what I like. You know? So do you think that people like feel like you, not you specifically, like anybody who's working with influencers get like a different price? They do. Okay. I'll be the first to say it. I okay. do YouTubers cars for free. No, you don't. Really? I do YouTubers cars for free. What do you mean for free? For free. What? Yep. Wait, expl explain this. That's my marketing. That's my marketing. So that's you paying for the marketing. If I pay for the marketing, which which they deserve me to pay for the marketing. Like that's the beauty, right? Like if I do it at my cost, mm -hmm. my guys, my electricity, let's say I give them a different rate. I'm marketing their, their I'm valuing their marketing at $0 if I do it at my cost. Do you understand that? I, yeah. I if mean, this cost me $2, sense. I sell it to you for $2. Yeah. I didn't do you a favor. And right. if you go, well, thanks for selling me this at your cost. Now Tommy's the best. I didn't value you at shit. And that's insulting to me as an influencer. If I was in their shoes. So I do that. So I don't, pay, I don't do I don't pay for parts. That's them. They pay for what the parts I design the build. I execute the build, but they do not pay any labor. Got you. Labor wise. Okay. Labor. Yeah. That's, that's the, the only place we make money. Gotcha. I give them the, usually they can get parts themselves at their own cost right, or my right. cost. Um, so when they leave, they're paying for all their parts because I don't design the turbo. I don't, you know, I didn't build the HKS turbos or anything like that. Right. But our labor, any service we offer is free. Okay. That makes sense. But, <laughs> but like a I'm lot of them are connected with HKS or whoever yeah. they need to be and can get the stuff cheap or, you know, right. it's valuable that, that market. I mean, to be fair, like a car like TJ's, we lose sixty five thousand dollars in labor. Sixty thousand. Yeah, but it's TJ Hunt. Like, 
But he'd have to sell a lot of builds to make that money up. But to me, it's just brand recognition. You know, like right. he goes out. I can I can sit here and say every YouTuber has a skyline built by us, and they work, and it's accurate. Yeah, you know, everyone who has a skyline pretty much has it built by us, and it works. And that that that's in the, the priceless to me. Right. You know. Damn, that's crazy. I, I was in shock. I was like, no way. Like. You're doing a shit for free. I mean, a lot of times we've done free, parts, but like, um, you know, Haltech is good yeah. to us and we'll connect them with the YouTuber and their ECU is free, you know, what or whatever, or discounted. So I try to get them discounts and yeah. try to promote things from my end when I can to help mm -hmm. the YouTuber out. But do this, ex I mean, it, you'll learn or it's expensive to do what these YouTubers are doing, you know? Yeah. We spoke about that earlier. Yeah. Like how expensive it's it is, expensive. Whether, whether it's, you know, putting up initial costs for equipment. Or you spend 300 K a year to make 350 K, you know, yeah, exactly. you make 50 K at the end of the year and you work yeah. 20 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So and I'm not, I don't want anyone to feel bad for YouTubers are very lucky people, but it's uh it's a lot more work than I think people think, especially if you own a shop right. because you have a business to run and then you have to come film videos. You have editor. I used to. Yeah. We don't anymore. We don't, I don't do as many, uploads or anything right. as i used to but um i do it myself i hit it with I'm my saying. record button you need time yeah it takes time yeah so i let them film it i give them all the content mm -hmm. like the only upside is people know it where it right. was done you know right and th i think that's worth every penny and i would say it to any company anyone with a company a shop a part get in a youtuber's hands yeah it's it's the most direct marketing you could ever have i i, I agree and i'm not saying because i'm a youtuber no but, yeah you know it's it's full time. It's full time marketing. You know, exactly. For all day they they can literally just promote your shop. They could be in the shop all day and make one whole video for you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so I I agree with that. I'm surprised you actually uh, understand that concept though. Well, as a YouTuber, I'd always be like, yeah. The worst thing as a YouTuber is like, let's say you own a little small shop that makes some trinket that works, right? right. And you give it to me for free. Super cool, but it's like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. I promote it and your business explodes. So let's say I'm Adam LZ or I'm TJ Hunt. So right. I actually have like a huge following. Your business explodes. I see no upside to that. Me as TJ Hunt or Adam LZ. Right. So like it almost gets to a point where you have to value that even more and mm -hmm. be like, yeah, I'll promote that product for 10% of your business. And I don't even think that's outrageous because yeah. your business might just be in the shadows until you get some lucky break mm -hmm. if it's not for that YouTuber. Right. You know, I mean, I remember talking to Michelin back in the day and they're like, We've pretty much pulled out of all at the time. They're like, we pretty much pulled out of all conventional conventional marketing, meaning like TV, magazines. Like, we do what we have to do for IMSA and Lamont, like all those other right. race programs. But mm -hmm. all of our money's in influencers because it's, yeah. you know, you're at the dentist and you see a road and track and you might flip through it and be like, oh, Cooper tires. Who gives a fuck? You know. Yeah. But if I'm like, these are the best tires, and you're watching and you have the same car, you have a similar car, you might go out and get those tires. You know, right. everyone's influenced by whatever's around them you know i agree i agree so you're into porsches right yeah is there anything that you're looking to build in the future like what's your all like right now at this current moment with the cars you own right we didn't really speak too much about porsches but yeah you just said before you're getting into them now right? so so i'm i talked shit about volkswagen earlier yeah i i test drove adam's girlfriend had a ttrs okay you're familiar with that rs3 yes. ttrs Daza, yes so i was in it and I was like, wow, you know, this thing's goofy as hell. Look, and it was lime green with like blue piping and shit on the interior. It was lime green? Yeah, the outside was lime green. Oh, that's yeah, like, Colette, uh, like Colette. one stocks. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so I was like, this thing's really cool. And I said, if this thing's corny, if this was in a Volkswagen Golf, I'd, I'd own a Volkswagen Golf. Yeah. Next thing I know, a shop hit me up. We started working together and I RS3 swapped oh, my Golf, my Golf R. I bought a Golf R just to do the project because the engine was fucking phenomenal. It was the coolest thing. I had ever driven at the time, yeah. but it was just in the wrong chassis. So mm. I'm like that, you know, like I like OEM plus. I like to take, so that build was OEM plus. I had Audi, I had a Golf R with right. an RS3 engine, transmission, diff, subframe, gas tank, drive shaft, wheels, brakes, seats, steering wheel, shift knob. Anything from that RS3 that would fit in that car was in that car. Gas tank is crazy. Gas tank, it had to because yeah. the high pressure fuel right. pump and all that shit. So it all bolted in. That's an OEM plus build. Gotcha. That's OEM plus. Eventually, I put TEs on it and kind of ruined the theme. But when it had the RS3 wheels and shit, that car made me so happy. Just because right. it, it like it like filled that hole where you're like, I need this OEM plus. Um, car was phenomenal, and I'm big on doing that. So my next venture is um, 
I have the Turbo S. I love the 997 chassis. Mm-hmm. I accidentally bought a 997, and I love that car. Accidentally. Yeah, <laughs> I just wanted a Turbo. Right. Adam had a Turbo S, a 992. We went to Tail the Dragon. I had an F80 at the time. Mm-hmm. Adam was, like, destroying us. You know, we were doing pretty good, but Adam was working half as hard and yeah, destroying us. So someday I'm going to get a Turbo S. And that's the last year where they were smaller. Right. You know, like, that car's not... You look at a 991, it's fucking huge. It's like... That's a 7.8 scale of a 9.91. Yeah. So, and then the air-cooled stuff is pre that one. So, that's a 9.96. Mm-hmm. That's a 9.97. The air-cooled stuff is pretty dope, though. The air-cooled stuff is cool, but it's super saturated market. Everyone's yeah. building air-cooled. Singer, mm-hmm. Gunther Works, Emotion, Kelly. Mo- like, there's so many shops. Mm-hmm. So, I was like, well, I like the 9.96. I like the 9.97. But like BMW or like Gaul, like Volkswagen or whatever, they always put, like, the wrong engine in the car like in my opinion a um like uh the new i don't i can't think of an example of this but like how much cooler would an m4 be if it came with the m5 engine or how much cooler would an m2 be when before it came with the m3 engine right and then when it came with the m3 engine people were like why the fuck would i buy an m3 when i can get the or whatever an m4 yeah. i'd rather have an m2 than an m4 right unfortunately that's been they bmw's kind of history so far though yeah they do Especially it like with the all-wheel drive and, and, you know sure but the 996 and the 997, the NA engines weren't much better than like the Carrera S engines. Mm. Uh, so if you get like a GT3 996, it makes 385 horsepower. You get a GT3 997.1, it makes 415. A 997.1 Carrera S makes 385. So you're only talking 30 horsepower, but the yeah. cost is twice as much. What else are you getting between the... Like, what's the difference? But like the, There's nothing in between, nothing. but the price is triple you know you get a career s it's let's say a 997 career s is 40k a 997.1 gt3 is 120 minimum (laughs) yeah so i started doing my research and bench builds and no one knows this and i haven't said this on youtube yet but i am working on 991.2 four liter gt3 engines into 996 and 997 chassis so it'll be a 505 horsepower 9000 rpm engine in a car that like the 996 you can get under 3,000 pounds and they can handle that that kind of power yeah I yeah mean, it's they, they didn't really do a lot well that makes 530 yeah, these, turbo yeah yeah right. so but like the turbo 996 is 450 I think the yeah GT2 is 500 530 horsepower so the reason that car is a 4s the reason I bought that is the s models um the 4s we'll say is wide mm-hmm. So okay. you have narrow body, wide body. The turbo in the 997, the 4S, the turbo, and the GT3 RS and the GT2 are wide body. All mm-hmm. others are narrow body. Okay. And that car's all wheel drive, twin turbo, you know. Right. So that car's a 4S. It's wide body. You can fit a 325 on the back of that car. Stock. Like just- yeah. Right now it has 295s. It's bone stock. Shit. Yeah. This car is 325s on the back. So what I want to do is I want to I want to build a I want to buy a 997.1 GT3 mm-hmm. and put the 991.2 4 liter engine into it and have a manual 500 horsepower car and then I have this car's PDK cuz it's right. an S. Yeah. So PDK all wheel drive turbo car all the best of both worlds. And yeah, this I, and is, yeah. Yeah, this car is fucking awesome. <laughs> you know, carbon ceramics is like it's not the fast car thing, it's like 10.7s in the quarter mile bone stock and it it gets out, moves out, but um more people want NA for some reason, like the Porsche community. With the Porsche, yeah. They love it. So I think if I can take the GT3s or even the Carrera S's, make them look like a GT3, make 500 horsepower, rev to 9,000 RPM, should be a big market for it, you know? Do you think that these cars are more of a driver's car? I always mentioned in the previous episode, but um, I feel I feel like a lot of people who get into these cars, um, they feel like it can do anything they want it to do, you know? Yeah, I mean, that car is, is gnarly. Does it make you feel like you're in complete control of the car because you, you could do anything in these cars right yeah like uh that car with all-wheel drive and the 325s and the 255s up front like i've never even had like a close call mm-hmm. it just you hit the gas as hard as you want and like yeah. if you have everything on it does what you want um and that's the other thing it goes back to the rb and the skyline versus yeah. supra the bmws i had an f80 yeah jordan tuned it del- uh did the, the pinned it or whatever you know crank did all up, that crank up. yeah and the car with the traction control light would blink at 80 miles an hour with 305 sport cup twos yeah like it would obviously limit torque it would do things yeah and i was like i i couldn't hit the gas 
I mean, dude, 40 miles an hour, it just light the tires up if you have traction yeah. control off. And if you don't, you're leaving mm-hmm. horsepower on the on the table where yeah. that thing, just like a Skyline, puts it down. Like, I think that's the natural progression from a Skyline. You get the same, not the same, but you get the same positives. Okay. You know, I don't, there's not another, I mean, an R35, I guess, technically right. would be, but they're just so heavy. Yeah. That car weighs like 3,400 pounds. Which is a little bit more than, I think the Supers are on the same I think it's 32. Yeah, I don't know. That's crazy. But though. the all-wheel drive system adds weight. And yeah. And, you know. So how, how do you, how did you, because you said you weren't into Porsches. And you, you, I avoided them. You avoided them. My fear was when I got it, I would hate all the other junk. You know, <laughs> that's a 1996 Mitsubishi. Yeah. If I got that car first, I would never even look at that car. Right? Like mm. if I was some rich kid in, in, in 2004 yeah. instead of what I was, and my parents in 2004 were buying me you know, I'm, I'm talking rich kid. My parents didn't buy me anything. But if in 2004, my parents were buying me whatever the fuck was out in 2004, mm-hmm. a, two, a Turbo S, 996 Turbo, there'd be no way I'd ever talk to, like touch a Skyline today, touch an Evo, touch a 350Z. I, I just don't see that being like natural progression. So True. it'd make me like snobby, you know, or, right. and I am a little snobby now that, that I own that. I do kind of look <laughs> at stuff a little differently, but um, I like how honest you are. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. I just don't. I, you know, what am yeah. I? Who's who am I doing a favor to? Lying to you and saying, you know, saying I love everything. But I, I just that car is. It's a lifer. That one specifically. Yeah. I, I bought that car with seven thousand original miles. It's a two thousand thirteen. Um, wow. And it's it's fucking rad. It's so good. I mean, it shits on everything. It shits on well everything. You know, JDM old. Yeah. But. I love it. And I think I'll, I'll love like when I do the GT3 thing, you mm. know, because I want to touch it. And like that thing, there's not really much I can do before I start fucking things up and, you know, right. Breaking stuff like it's pretty good. Are these cars is. easy to work on, though? I don't know. Never. Okay. Fucking never, done even, it. never even did done the coilovers in it. That's it. Okay. it look at though. Looks like the whole kind of like a skyline. We dropped the whole front end on the subframe and everything. Yeah. I think that's how, how those go down too. right. But that's part of the process. Um, When when I get there is doing the swap, taking it all apart. With the Skyline, I had to take like three apart before I was comfortable putting one together. So mine got hit. That's when my channel kind of popped off. Mm. I got hit in my original $17,000 Skyline and I filmed the whole thing. I didn't film the actual impact, right? but I got out of the car after the impact with my camera rolling, talking shit to the owner. I saw he had a fire department sign, like mm-hmm. license plate frame and talk shit about that. I don't know if in your area it's like that. If you're in the fire department, you're connected. You could yes. be drunk driving down the yeah. road and they're like, just get home. Just get you home, know? yeah. So I saw that. I was like, oh, this motherfucker. The cop rolls up and I, I was talking shit to the cop, filming the whole thing. This guy fucked up my, you know, destroyed a skyline on R32. And that video kind of, you know, projected me to mm-hmm. where I am. I would say that was, if you gave me like a point, like where do you think your channel kind of popped off? It, it was right then. That was, that was, yeah. how many years ago was that? That was 2017. Same year I bought it. Wow. Same year I got hit. I bought it January, built it like May, June, got hit in like August. Yeah. And in that time, I I have a street racing story I wanted to tell you. Yeah, I was in, that was my next question. Yeah. I had like in that, like, so had, were you street racing with the Hondas back then? Yes. Um, so it was slow cars though, you know, racing okay. like a Jetta, a Neon, yeah. whatever. So it was funny in my town, there was a bunch of people with like slow cars and mm-hmm. a guy had a Jetta, a guy had a Neon, a guy had an Integra, stuff like that. Um, I'll tell you, I at 16... I used to sit in like the hospital parking lot and practice launching, you know, my RT two fifteens, like launch, launch, launch all day long. And, uh, I started racing the older dudes that I looked up to and mm-hmm. started beating all their cars who like, I just thought it was fun until like I beat the first one. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I thought that car was fast. I think, you know, didn't really know what was going on. And the guy was supposed to be a good driver. And it started like exposing these people, you yeah. know, cause I don't know. I don't know how it slipped through or how that works, but Everyone thought these people were the fastest, and then I just started beating them. And I'll tell you, the fastest car, the car that kept up with me the closest at that time, was a DA Integra that was automatic. So, like, that's how bad all these other cars were. And I had a stock CRX. Oh, I had auto. A I had a DA Auto. <sighs> Garbage. Terrible, man. Garbage. Terrible. But it was, like, crazy because, like, you know, they, we're talking 15, 16-second yeah. cars. And um, so I did that. Didn't really race the the Eclipse. Race a lot with the Evo. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Did my you have any issues with the transfer case on those? No. No? No. Um, but so my mom had owned a laundromat in the okay. center of town. Lime Rock was there. So there's a gas station across from my mom's laundromat. Mm-hmm. And I would sit literally outside of her laundromat yeah. and wait for the people to leave Lime Rock. Ferraris, all types of shit. And I would chase them. And it wasn't like drag race, like highway. It was like windy back roads, touching their rear bumper, being a fucking asshole. You know what I mean? Like at the time, <laughs> I thought it was so cool. And I mean, I know a lot of them did too because I had some some interactions, but that is where I like, I, that's what I really loved. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like those toge battles almost. Yeah. And I was just like, I remember one day I saw an F40 and it wasn't like uncommon. Like living there wasn't that uncommon to see because of Lime Rock. Yeah. And I was like, that's it. I got. I got to chase this F40. I'm not going to get another chance. So I had an RS. I had Owens Flag R's uh, external reservoir coilovers, brakes. Had um. They made like 380 horsepower. It was a yeah. fast car. It was under 3,000 pounds. And he got onto the back road, and it's really windy. I knew it like the back of my hand, and I was touching this guy's rear bumper. And this this road shit. He's like bottoming out, ripping chunks of pavement, like spraying my car, and I'm just like touching his rear bumper. So he pulls over after we do the run, and it was just such a cool experience. He was like looking at the car. He super thick Italian accent. Um, some Italian dude just had an F40 in my area. And yeah. what I'll never forget is he was wearing a Yamaha R1 shirt. Mm-hmm. And my buddy rolled up and he had worked for Skip Barber and stuff. And he was on a Yamaha R1 and he was wearing a Ferrari F40 shirt. Oh, it was like so the crazy. Like the- <laughs> it was just like weird. But that's what makes me remember the story. But um, yeah, wow. I used to love doing that shit. And then I didn't really drag race too too much and i got my gtr Mm -hmm. and i built it like i told you and um i put the video up i had to take it down but uh (laughs) i went out one night and it was a fresh build and i went to this meet Mm -hmm. and i and then some people were talking shit not at the meet and i was like i want to bench line this baseline this car i want to i want to benchmark this car i don't know what it can do it feels fast as fuck so there was a dude with an srt4 that ran he had his track number on his quarter glass still you know he ran 11-1 and he had a buddy with a C6. They didn't know what he ran, but it was faster. Right. He'd beat the SRT4 every time. So we hit the highway, racing. I beat them both. Destroy them both. Yeah. Destroy them both from a roll. Um, and one of the last races, I saw a ton of smoke out of the back of my car. So I pull over at the, at the over um, overpass, and they pull up behind me. And I'm looking, and I didn't have a catch can. And you see those two fittings on the top? Yeah. See the one on the right? Yes. That dumped oil directly onto the turbo and just made it smoke. It just like had a little blow by. Oh, uh, okay. Not a big by. deal. Right. Right. Cleaned it up. And I was like, well, that sucks. I didn't have a catch can. And they were like, you want to go one more time? Like three wide. We had all done like single race. Yeah. Race the SRT4, race the Corvette. Oh, I didn't launch right. Do it a bunch of times. So like, you want to go one more time, three wide. I think it'd be cool to see the, the you know, real time. I'm like, okay. So we go three wide. I'll show you the video when we're done. Uh, we take off. I and you can see in the video. I click fourth, top of fourth is about 144 miles an hour in the five speed. Okay, and I pull, and you just hear me go, "See ya!" And like you, the two cars just look like they put it in reverse, right? What? And I shut it down a little early, probably like the cars, the RB revs to like 8200 RPM. Okay, so I shut it down because we're approaching the cars at 140 miles an hour, we're approaching yeah. them pretty quick. Well, the SRT4, like bouncing off limiter, goes by me. And the Corvette kind of like goes by me. I slow down a little aggressively, you know, just because the cars, I don't don't want to be close to cars at all. Right. So the Corvette's like goes past me. You see the SRT4 go past me on limiter and you see the Corvette go past me. The SRT4 like kind of goes into the shoulder and then you just see his car go sideways, shoot straight across four lanes into the cemetery. Cars 10 feet in the air rolling. Oh, so that's why you had to take it down. Because yeah. I was going to ask you, like, why'd yeah, you have to take, to take it, it down? down? It had like 80,000 views in like six hours. Did you see the actual... The- I'll show you the video. You watch the whole fucking thing go down. Like every aspect of this. The camera's rolling. My passenger filmed the car. We went past. I was on the phone with the police while the dude was still in the air. And they're like, we already got the call. While the dude and was I, still and in I the was air. like, I'm not... St- I, you know, I didn't stop. We just, we just left. What? You know, because like... like I'm not getting in trouble because somebody did some dumb shit. Yeah. After that, I kind of stopped street racing in that manner where it's like, I'll do a two, three pull or I'll race somebody I'm friends with or something, but I'm, I'm way more cautious. Cause yeah. that dude almost took out the Corvette. When you watch the video, you're gonna be like, Oh shit. Like the Corvette's here and he just shoots straight in front of him. What? Yeah. 
SR two four. Maybe no, maybe no street racing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was so, that your only? That was the only time doing it though. Like, no, no, I street race a ton. Okay. but like that was when I was like, I was never like the stop the highway like we were talking about mm -hmm. New York City drag race prep flamethrower on the ground <laughs> shit. But it would yeah. just be like little pulls here and there. You roll up to a car, you you fuck with them, throw mm -hmm. your hazards on. Dude, I'd still do that. You know, that's yeah. so fun. Have you ever raced for money? No, no. I don't think so. No. Nope. I've seen some slips? crazy some crazy money races. Yeah, no, no, pink slip racing. <laughs> That'd be cool. I, I mean, I loved it. I loved watching that. But a lot of the times, especially back then, like, you're poor. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> you ain't giving up no car. <laughs> dude, I, I got another story one time. I, I, um, I have two. I had the Evo. I pulled into this parking lot, and I had, like, race pads. So they were squealing. And there was these like raggy motherfuckers over on the side. And they mm -hmm. were like, oh, nice brakes, you know, talking shit. And I get out and I'm with my buddy at the time. And I'm like, and the kid had a Cavalier. <laughs> okay. Garbage. Yeah. Big stupid wing on it. So he's like, I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those brakes are cool, huh? Like, you know, just trying to. And he's like, yeah, I'll fucking smoke that thing and this. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, this dude's super dumb or has like some secret fast Cavalier, which at that time I don't even think was ever a thing. Yeah. It wasn't like a cobalt, you know, even mm -hmm. though those are anything. So I raced him. I thought maybe he had nitrous or something because that was like a big nitrous time. Right. And I destroyed him. And well, when we raced, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll race you for a hundred bucks. I was like, I got a hundred bucks. He's like, yeah, this dude didn't have a hundred bucks. <laughs> so we do the race. <laughs> we get back and he's now like my best friend, you know, yeah. and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, so that hundred bucks, you got to pay for my gas. And he was like, oh, I don't have it. And my buddy is like talking shit to him and I climb up onto his trunk and rip his wing off and put it in my back seat. And I'm like, all right, we're straight. Rip this fucking what? APR, you know, auto <laughs> yeah. zone wing off through my back seat. So we get back to my other friend's house. We we're gone longer than we were supposed to be because we were just supposed to pick up a part and come yeah. back. We get back and I'm like, you're never going to believe it. He's like, let me guess you raised someone because back then you couldn't leave your house in an Evo without catching an STI yeah. or racing somebody. And I was like, yeah. And then I pulled the wing out of the back. He's like, where the fuck do you get that? I was like, yeah. And then my other buddy told him the story. It was like, we, let, we hung it up on his wall. It was out there forever. Hey, the guy wasn't pissed off? Oh, he was so pissed. But he would have got, he would have got beat up. Like, we were ready. Yeah, you know, I'm like, say, I was just what? pissed. Like, he, he disrespected me, raced, lost, and didn't yeah. have the money. And it was just like, fuck you, do something about it. And he didn't do a goddamn thing. Was I it mean, a stick on? Or it was like screwed in? Dude, it, it ripped like holes in his trunk. But like, the car was a pile of shit. I bet. He was more embarrassed than pissed, you know, at that yeah. time. But then uh, one time when I first got the Evo, my buddy was real good with like electronics. Right. And I put a Gretty boost controller in. Okay. Because when I checked the gauge, when I got it back, it was only making 13 pounds of boost. They're supposed to make 19.6. Oh, wow. So any Evo guy out there knows exactly what happened. Someone built the car or modded the car. And then when they turned it in, they just looped the line, gave it back mm. to the dealer. It ran fine. Everything was fine. Yeah. So I'm like, why is this only making 13 pounds? I bought a boost controller and we're tuning it. And we come around this corner and uh, there's this place where we always used to drag race. Yeah. And I just see two cars like stopped probably a half a mile ahead. And, uh, and then he's messing with it. And I'm like, what is going on? And then you just hear like, dur, 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 like they took off. Yeah. And I was like, they're racing. I'm like, you got it. He's like, it should be good. I fucking downshift. And these cars, which I didn't know what they were. I just right. knew they were racing. were like this. And I came up on them and like split them and just blew right past them. I mean, granted, at the time, now that I look back, it was like an EK Civic and an Integra, like a DC okay. Integra. Yeah. They weren't out fast. They were not, yeah. But those guys were probably like totally blown away that they're in the middle of a race and just some... It's not like the highway where you might run into a car. Right. We were on some fucking back roads, you know? <laughs> These people were able to line up without anything in sight and run. Um, and that was on the same road I raced a Cavalier. So that's why I remember <laughs> that. Having that car, if you were coming from a Honda, it's like... Oh, they were the best. Yeah. That was insane. I mean... Around that time, too, especially. Just a, like I had an Evo 5, so I had the 10.5 hot side. Mm -hmm. uh, an, e, an 05 Evo, I mean. Yeah. And uh, there's a little bit better. But it's it's a miracle I didn't die in that thing, driving like an idiot when I was 19, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. I wanted when I was like 18. A lot of people were dying in like the STIs and the Evos back then. I don't know really? if you remember that. No. Oh, yeah. Back in like 03 to 06, rich kids would get them and... They were, you'd be a hero until you weren't anymore. They would, they would do everything for right. you. But uh, I remember the Evo being like one of the most expensive cars to insure because mm -hmm. kids were crashing them all, all the time. I did hear about that actually, yeah. with the insurance. Yeah. yeah. I remember there would always be a post in the Evo forum, Evo M, mm -hmm. uh, Evolution M.net. Yes. Yeah, so I remember Some, used to go in there. Yeah. yeah. Someone, someone, oh, my buddy died or our friend, you know, whatever. There was always posts about it. Wow. Just because they were so fast and 
they would do everything until they wouldn't, you know? Yeah. That was a crazy time though. That was fun. Right. There was a, this area was heavy Subaru STI mm -hmm. area. So everyone was always trying to like benchmark their car against the Evo. Yeah. You know, everyone thought they were the same. Against, they were right. like the same, but 1500 bucks into an Evo and it was not the same anymore. We're <laughs> like the STI, you don't spend 30 grand. Well, you know. I think it's more known now because when I when I car first came out, like I don't think people knew because you know you, you had, it wasn't pushed to the limits yet when it first right, came right. out. So now it's like a known thing. Like yeah. you know you don't now know they're almost like boring because everything's been done. Yeah, and, you know. So what's next for you, man? Like what do you, what are you what are your plans for this next we year? Will, we want the shop to you know now with the thirty fours coming in, mm -hmm. we want the shop to boom with thirty fours. I want to try to do. I don't want to say I want to try to do less thirty twos, but you know. When Hoonigan, Hoonigan came here, did videos, people come here and do videos and usually we have all the cars outside and yeah. it's like, it's like a, it's like a, a sight to see. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, to me it's like played cause I get to see them every day. So right. I just want to see more 34s and then I want to dabble with the poor stuff while, you know, and, 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 and my own in the back background, just see what I can do. Cause I, I think, um. Uh, a lot of people are touching them, you know, like singer. I mean, singers are insane. It's like. The first time an aftermarket company has been gotten the clout that mm -hmm. they've gotten, you know, and it's it's awesome. But um, I think there's a hole in the market for for those newer air, water cooled yeah. cars that just not getting modded. Everyone's just like trying to get the next one, right? Instead of like, you know, I mean, I'm late to the game. Nine nine six turbos and stuff; those were always crazy, but. Uh, swapping yeah. just really not done and it's probably blasphemy but i love that like magnus walker outlaw aspect of it modified porsches are called outlaws and i okay. think magnus walker like coined that i think um but he would like just um swap parts and you know body parts and yeah. just modernize cars and stuff and i i, th I think that's that's going to be cool. You know, like RWB is I was another just, I one. I was just going to yeah. say. So it's similar. It's similar. It's, similar it's that. I mean, like he's more OEM plus, I would yeah. say. But uh, yeah, I just think the outlaw build style is really cool. And that's why my Porsche is sitting on Japanese wheels. And, you know, eventually we'll have some other stuff. That's that's the first thing I actually noticed. Yeah, the <laughs> Advance hit. Advance, they they yeah. look good on that. I got a set for the red one, too. Yeah. You can see more of the uh, the calipers. Yeah. The, big the carbon so ceramics. Yeah. It's fire. Yeah. Yeah, those cars are fast. I mean, like, yeah. the problem with the PDK is you can't service them. You can't get in there. Mm. So, like, a you know, whatever the B58 transmission is, yeah. is people are building them or doing whatever. Um, I think BBI, yeah, you can't get into those. Yeah. So, if, like, a sensor inside that transmission goes, you need a new transmission of 40 grand. <sighs> BBI, like, cut one open, upgraded the clutches, mm -hmm. and welded it back closed. But, like, how many people with $140,000 Turbo S's want you to cut their transmission? Yeah. You know? So that's the downfall of that one. But if you get like a manual dot one, right? I mean, people people make serious power. But the negative of a manual is you got to shift the fucking thing. Yeah, you know, which Depends. which now everyone's starting to realize. Like the new autos are cool. Right. That PDK is awesome. It's like the best thing. The trans that comes in the Supra is awesome. The BMW DCTs are fucking awesome. I think this is at the top of the top of the yeah, game. The, the transmissions, the PDKs. They're the fastest, but once again, they're not serviceable and you can't upgrade anything. So like right. even the RS3, you can upgrade the clutches and mm -hmm. those. RS3s are gnarly too. I but mean, it's pricey though still yeah, to yeah, do yeah. that. You know, yeah, I mean, money. once you get into those higher end cars, <laughs> if they could do it, it'd probably cost you like four, 50 grand to do right. it, even though it's probably two grand worth of shit yeah you know? no exactly it's, it's probably no crazy. harder than the rs3 or the mm -hmm. or the super well you probably need certain tools too to kind of um to do the transmissions yeah i mean you like i said you can't even open those though. yeah if a sensor goes you're done yeah that's you it. know you're like a, yeah so and they're not autos like the like the super is an actual auto right right but the dct like i loved my f80 I love yeah, that for car. for what you were doing with it, I think that's where it serves its purpose. Yeah. But I think a lot of people try to get those cars and drag race them. Yeah, and that's where it becomes an issue where it's like, all right, well, the car wasn't really designed for that. Right. Um. But yeah, they're really great for like you know. It's crazy seeing racing. like the X three M's and X four M's mm -hmm. like making eight hundred horsepower with like nothing. Dude, the X M truck they just came out with. I think it's a hybrid. One of my one of my uh, guests he put a JB four on it. Yeah. And it made like eight hundred horsepower on E thirty. Yeah. Eight hundred from insane. the factory. It's silly. Crazy. It's silly, but I mean, they're heavy, but it's getting to the point where like M4 is so heavy, they're probably not much heavier than an yeah. M4, you know, or an M5. But I would love like a an M4 with an M5 um, 
X drive mm-hmm. drivetrain. You know, that's, the, that's what everybody would want. Yeah, yeah. Because the M5 is fucking huge. Yeah. It's so I mean, even the M4 is super big. Or an M2. Like, uh, like yeah. if they make the M2 X drive, like maybe I'd I'd dabble with an M2 again. I think they're getting the, they're the drift. Gonna, yeah. They're gonna because they're, the 240s X drive, the M4s yeah. X drive. You could probably put the M4 stuff in there mm-hmm. if if you've bought a couple salvage cars, but um, that's the only M plus shit that I'm looking for right. people to do. Right. I don't care for drag racing, but it is interesting to see what a car can do, like the SRT8s and yeah. the Trackhawks and all that stuff. I I rode in um, John Hennessy's track. He took me. You know what John Hennessy is? Really? Yeah. He took. I went to his track, and uh, he took me down his drag strip. He has his own drag strip right, right. next to his shop, and. Um, it was in a track hawk like built by Hennessy. It was fucking insane. They had the uh, he had the Viper back in the day, a long yeah. time. Yeah, you yeah. know he started with three thousand GT. It's really, Do- Dodge Stealth. A Dodge he, Stealth. He, he, same that was thing, a, that he, was the American. Yeah, right? he accidentally or he went to like some half mile thing. His story's nuts. He went to some half mile thing and like, you know, put a manual boost controller. Kind of took like the DSM route to yeah. it, you know, and like got it together and did insane. And then everyone's like, oh, build my Stealth. And that's how Hennessy started. He was just building something. And then, he, then he just graduated. Most Supra guys back then graduated to Vipers. That was yeah. like the Supra. Like, Supra was a drag race king until the Viper came out. And then everyone with the Supra was like, fuck that, I'm getting a Viper. Those are the same people that would today get an R35. Mm. Like, that's that, like, people probably argue or agree with me. Like, that's that demographic that yeah. would, that did that. And um, the Viper was gnarly. But, yeah, he started with Dodge Stealth. Piece of shit. I remember the the, the Dodge Stealth. That's yeah. crazy. I forgot about that car. Yeah, they did like the Venom, you know. Yes. John, I yeah. did the most American thing. I had a Geo Tracker. So me and another YouTuber did like a challenge in Texas, and we yeah. ended up at Hennessy's. And the other guy had a Camaro convertible V6, mm-hmm. and I had a Tracker because I just we did a live stream, and however much money we made in live stream, we could use to buy a car. So I bought like a six hundred dollar uh, Geo Tracker. <laughs> Dude, I had so much fun in that thing. I drag raced it down Hennessy's drag strip against the Camaro. Yeah. I beat the Camaro. So the deal was, I think I beat the Camaro or something happened where we got to blow up the Camaro. Mm-hmm. So we park it at the end of John Hennessy's drag strip, a V6 convertible Camaro and put a five gallon like Poland spring bottle, yeah. half full of Tannerite in it. And John Hennessy was on the back of my geo tracker with an AR-15 shooting a V6 Camaro on a drag strip and blew it the fuck up. Dude. One, it was the most American thing I've ever been a part of. That's crazy. You know, and two, we didn't know how big the bomb was going to be. Yeah. Window regulators were flying a hundred. A window regulator, almost a whole door, flew a hundred yards past where we were standing. So we got hit with fucking debris. At the end of it, there was nothing left of the Camaro. It's all on YouTube. What? It's fucking crazy. Definitely got to check. It's that legal out. in Texas to shoot Tanner. Yeah, I guess it's fucking nuts. What? But that was nuts. That I, I don't even hello think American. <laughs> it's super. It's super. <laughs> Him with and the, it's sexist too. Yeah, yeah. And the, the but the thing is, I learned John Hennessy can't shoot for shit. It took him like 12, <laughs> 12 shots to fucking. I'd probably be the same. Yeah. I'd probably be the same. I, dude. It, it, we're lucky no one got hurt. Yeah, the shit flew. I mean, like, I remember looking up. My camera was like probably ten yards from the car, just yeah. like placed, and like my um, what the fuck's it called? Like the not the lens cap, the um, the filter. The filter, yeah. I just peppered with burned metal. Like I had to take it off because you, if you did it, you just see speckles all over. Oh the shit! Really? Yeah, that was a crazy. That was crazy. So you have these giveaways, right? Yeah. Um, can I've you done talk a couple. A bit? Yeah, like um, I don't want to say this in like a braggadocious way. I was one of the first automotive YouTubers to do a giveaway. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did it at the end of 2016. I, I had a, I, when I talk about my YouTube journey, it seems like so calculated. Like I was an industry plant, but basically it was like, I remember being like so smart with it. When I, when I started, I owned a landscaping business, this YouTuber, I was parting out cars on the side. Yeah. YouTuber walks in and was like, Oh, you know, loud mouth. Like I make this much money. I have this many following. And I was like, cool. You can film. Just don't film me. I went home that night and I watched that YouTuber all night. And it was absolute garbage content. And people are going to say I'm a hater, but it was trash. And I didn't know this person. I didn't owe him anything. I was like, this person's not smart. What they're doing is garbage. If he can be successful on YouTube, I can. Yeah. So at that moment, he was, you know, I learned, I retained so much information from what he's saying. And he, he couldn't get a shop. He was 18 years old. No one rent him a shop. Mm-hmm. I had that 80,000 square foot piece of shit, that building that you were talking about. Yeah. So the next day I called him and I'm like, hey, uh, I think I can solve your shop problem. 
I was like, I'll rent you a corner of my shop, but I want you to help me with my YouTube channel. I didn't have one. Yeah. But I, I wanted to watch. I wanted to. Ex- so that was July, July of that year, 2016. November was my first YouTube video. So I like watched yeah. for three months, prepped. Yep. So I went into it like nuts, you know, like, oh, I'm going to build this car. And, and I started doing the math. I'm going to have 40 grand in this car. And I'm filming for 2000 people. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Right. So at that moment, I like backpedaled and I said, I'm going to build a $6,000 car for 6,000 people, you know, and once it gets me to 20,000, my idea was I'll give it away. I'll do a giveaway. And like right. I told you, first time I saw that was that 350Z. Yeah. Guy was going to give it away, raffle it. PayPal shut him down. So he sold shirts to do that. And uh, I didn't, I didn't know that that was illegal, not a legal raffle. Yeah. So my first one was not a legal raffle, but I did it just like everyone does them today. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was December, 2016, an S12 with a KA. That right. engine you were talking right, about, that's right. a piece of shit. Um, the S12. Red, red one, right? Was yeah, red. it was red. Yep. yep. Um, so I did that and that got me the money to buy my first GTR. Really? Yeah. So that was like the store, like that, like I dropped my landscaping business in that November. Like I did it for the rest of the year, did my accounts, sold it, sold my stuff, started YouTubing full time November. I got paid my first check January of 2017. Right. It was like 1800 bucks and it wasn't a lot of money, but I had sold all my lawn mowing equipment and all that. So I, I could, I could float. So it was like 1800 bucks and February was like 2400 bucks and March was like 3600 bucks. And then it was like, okay, this is now replace that business. Yeah. And it just looks so, I mean, I, I, I was on one cause I like, it looks so calculated. It looks so smart. Yeah. I look back and I'm like, what the fuck was I even thinking? Like, <laughs> but it, it, I mean, like, like I said, I'm not saying this bragging because I look back and I wasn't even aware of it. Right. But looking back, it was such a smart move. You know, the, the giveaway, the mer- like doing the YouTube channel, all that shit. How much was the GTR? 17,500 bucks. And the giveaway did like 20,000 bucks. Yeah. So it was like, I spent everything. And so I got that. That was year one. And uh, what's so funny is during that time, I had an E36 slick top, non sunroof car. Yeah. And I had sold it like three times, kept mm-hmm. getting it back. Sold it. The guy's like, ah, oh, it's just sitting in my yard. You want to buy it back? So I was like, I'm going to give this car away. Yeah. And so that was the first legitimate giveaway. And um, that car went crazy. I mean, I shouldn't even be nervous about saying numbers i don't give a fuck that car in two and a half days did ninety eight thousand dollars how are you promoting these giveaways though at the time my youtube channel that's it just youtube just so YouTube you channel. said you i can't. sold two items i sold a t-shirt uh, a sweatshirt pack yeah. and a detail pack that i and my buddy manually filled bottles like we bought gallons of soap and we filled little bottles that i bought off amazon yeah it's a real learning experience it was it was rough i not everything I did was smart, but it it, it, <laughs> went, it did really well. Two and a half days. I started Sunday. What was crazy was PayPal shut me down and I had to str- switch to Stripe um, because PayPal shut me down in like t- the first 24 hours. But the first 24 hours, I had done like 50, 55 grand. Wow. PayPal shut me down. Luckily that night, it was Sunday. Yeah. So I dropped it at like four o'clock or something and... I had to buy the merch because I didn't buy the merch. I didn't know how much merch to buy. Right, right. So I didn't have the gallons of soap. I didn't have the hoodies. I didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. I had the orders in. So that night before PayPal shut me down, I paid everyone. I paid chemical guys for the soap. I paid uh, whoever printed the shirts. I paid everyone. Yeah. And then when PayPal shut me down, like they, they held the money. They put a hold on the money. And I went to Stripe and Stripe just throws it in your account. Like Stripe doesn't PayPal will do that sometimes. They'll hold your money. So PayPal had like 60 grand of mine for like 180 days yeah but i owed all these people money but luckily before they because it was a sunday night that right. no one was there to manually shut it down i was able to pay everyone if i had just waited till that monday that would have been a fucking disaster yeah because i wouldn't have been able to pay anyone and people would be like, fuck you i'm not i'm not gonna right. give you this stuff you know right. and not thinking i didn't know it was gonna go that hard so mm-hmm. i just didn't plan for it you yeah. know i was like oh we're gonna sell how many detail kits i don't know so i don't want to buy 60 gallons of soap and only need two because <laughs> you know, that would crush me too so yeah. it was just like a perfect storm the only negative was paypal held 60 grand for 180 days or PayPal's i think it was like, worse man at the time yeah and so all they needed was me to supply all tracking numbers and show they were delivered right but i, I had to manually like Go in type in answer, a 17 yeah. digit or 13 digit tracking number which is which is terrible so I got lucky. And uh, after that, I was like, wow, this is, you know, giveaways were legit. But yeah. now it's, 
It's really watered it's down. Saturated. It's saturated. It's just too much. Merch. Do you think people are still doing well with them though? If they're if, if yeah, they're I mean, right. I know people that do them and they do well, but I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know what would have happened if I left that giveaway up for more than two and a half days. Yeah, like, I don't know what kind of numbers. Maybe it was winding down. I have right. no idea. Um, but I have not. I have had days as good since then, but I was only at like sixty thousand subscribers then. Yeah. So I've had days giveaway day ones do as well as that giveaway day one, but at like 200,000 subscribers. Yeah. Like you can't even compare them. Um, giveaways are cool. They're the, my vibe with giveaways, everyone does it for a cash grab, but with the, with the giveaways, I did it cause I wanted to, like I said, I had all these bench builds in my head mm -hmm. and I wanted to actually see them through. And there's no other scenario where I can get a bench build built and get 100% of my money back or more. Right. If I built this car and did, you know, built that Evo for 50 grand and I went to sell it, as you know, it's worth 20. Yeah. I'd lose 30 grand. And, right. But I'd get that out of my head and that was cool. But with giveaways, I could break even or profit. Mm -hmm. And that was, that's why I loved it. Right. I mean, I did love it for the money, but it was more so I could do the builds I wanted to do because that's how you learn what you like. Yeah. You know, you got to build 15 cars to know you want a GTR over a Supra. Yeah. You know, you have to. So I agree. The yeah. giveaways were, it's a really cool opportunity i wish people didn't water it down or didn't oversaturate it and kept that like passion or reason why yeah and, i mean even me i wish i i was able to do that mm -hmm. you know some of, some of my giveaways are cash grabby you right. know i've given away a grom and shit i give away an hks back but my build i still try to put 100 percent in you know yeah it's more fun and like sonic you know he he does crazy builds mm -hmm. and he his raffles are cool some of them you know, like a Tundra, like, I don't give a fuck. But like he did this white EG with like OEM plus like zinc hardware, K-Swap. Yeah. Looked factory. I was super into that. And I thought that was a really cool giveaway build because of, you know, it showed passion. It wasn't yes. just a cash grab. A Tundra exactly. is a cash grab. An EG build that you like break your balls to fit a stock airbox in. I can respect that. Yeah. You know, I agree. I, I think I... um Guys, let it, let me know in the comments if you guys want to do a giveaway at some point. Um, because I, I, it'd be the same thing. Yeah, like I would yeah. love to build a car and just give it away. Right. I don't want to just like do a cash grab. But yeah, yeah. like you said, sometimes it's people for, money, for money, and it, and it helps, and it's going to get you to the next level. Yeah, there's so many reasons for it that are positive, but you know they've kind of they kind of got boring. Yeah. you know what I mean. I, I look at them now and I'm like, oh, another giveaway. You right. know, even mine sometimes I'm like. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's stressful, but I couldn't imagine being a winner. Yeah. Could you imagine you watched a whole build go down I, from your favorite YouTuber, let's say, yeah. or your favorite car, whatever mm -hmm. the reason. And then you get that phone call. That's like, yo, you want it? It's like, I mean, it's, that's it's the not, best part for me. Like that's what I want to, I want to be able to, I want to make that phone call. Yeah. Like that's it's fun. That's dope. It's fun seeing them. And like the guy who won my HKS pack, I just did like some HKS trinkets. Like yeah. I did the, the bridge seed and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And he was actually like an HKS head. You know what I mean? Where I was like, oh, okay. Like it's a lot of that stuff. A lot of people just, right. I'll throw my hat in. Yeah. But uh, it was cool to see another HKS person get shit that you can't even get anymore. Right. You know? And I was, I was, that's, that's awesome. That's the best part. Yeah. I, that's one of the, one of the milestones I want to reach is definitely be able to give away a car and yeah. kind of call a person and yeah. go, you know, especially with the build. Have them on the podcast. Yeah. Like, what do you, how, a month after they get the car. The oh, downside. Dope, actually, that's a good idea. Yeah. The downside is like most times in my experience, they mm -hmm. get sold within 30 days. You the know, cars, the yeah. The cars get sold because it's changing people's life. A $30,000 car. Yeah is 30 grand right you know and not a lot of people have 30 grand so they're like do i need this 1996 nissan or do i want that 30 grand i bought i bought one i bought so back to the slick top the e36 yeah. i gave that away i bought it back which is like you don't do yeah but this car was special this was like my car so i bought it back upgraded it again so mm -hmm. when i when i built it it was a white piece of shit 328 tan interior i did a full like new black interior and bought an m3 put the m3 engine in it yeah. and like put the m3 brakes and did all that gave it away COVID hit the dude worked at like a brewery right fell on hard times offered me the car back i bought it back i did an s54 i did a csl airbox i did like jrz's i made it like even more gangster gave it away again yeah so this car i've owned like six times it went back up for sale and everyone sent it to me i'm like nah i'm done like i can't own that <laughs> couldn't do it but it was it was a gangster car it was yeah. super cool
I think a BMW might be the first one if I ever do a giveaway. Yeah, I'd be a BMW for sure. A lot of BMW uh, people watch this this uh, this podcast. Yeah, pr- prior to well, I'll talk to them specifically. Prior yeah. to YouTube, I parted out over two hundred fifty E thirty sixes. Really? Yeah, I used to go to the Bronx and Brooklyn and pick up. I mean, I picked up Daytona Violet E thirty sixes. I picked up wow. some rare cars. I never had a Dakar though. I never had a Dakar yellow one. Mm. But I've had a bunch of. I used to keep the gas doors because really? like no one buys the gas doors and that yeah. shows the color. So I still have a Daytona Violet gas door on my desk. Wow. Yeah. So I parted out those. Um, I was trying to build an E36 and bought one that was a piece of shit, parted out. And I was like, I bought that car for 600 bucks. I made 2,500 bucks. Yeah. Started doing it and it was fun, but I always had like 10 grand out on the street. You know, mm. like I buy four E36s, I'd sell the engine before I get back. And then I'd buy two more before, you know, before the next day. Right. So if I had more capital, it would have been fun. But um, yeah, I did that. And then I bought a 135. Mm. So that was my first. You don't like, see those anymore either. No, I really love the one M. Yeah, I was a big one M guy, but I couldn't afford one. I got a one thirty five, mm-hmm. and then uh, I wanted to do one M clone. My buddy Marco had done a one M clone, and then he ended up putting. So so Marco did a one M. He bought a one thirty five. Uh, did the one M clone, just the body stuff. Yeah. Then he bought an E ninety two M three drivetrain from the UK. Mm-hmm. Put it in the one M clone, so he had an S sixty five in it. Right. Super gangster. Then a Dynan S3 car came up, which is the 4.6 liter, like E92. Mm-hmm. He bought that, put his drivetrain in that, and put that drivetrain in his 1M. <laughs> so it has a, right now he owns as a 4.6 liter uh, manual 1M clone. And That's the car, crazy. Matt Fair has driven it. Jay Leno's driven it. Super cool car. I drove it. I drove it on Thunder Hill and in, in uh, that's That's Cali. a car. I never even sat in one of those, a 135 They're or cool. even a 1M. I yeah. love that, like, you know, meatball chody look that they have. That's <laughs> sick. It's nice. Uh, it, the way, well, not the meatball chody look, well, pause, but I like the uh, I like the style of that car. Yeah, they're they're, it's, it they're was, interesting, and yeah. I love when BMW does their parts bin cars. That's what I call mm. them. Like the Z3M super yes. parts, bin, especially the last year with the S54. Right, has like E36 rear suspension, or the Z4 has like, I guess the the Z3 Z4 has is, like is super now. Yeah, yeah, now <laughs> the um. They would do these weird parts bin cars like the Z3 where it'd have like three eight, E30 suspension, sorry. Mm-hmm. So the back would have like E30 trailing arms and yeah. then it would have like an E46 front subframe and engine and then the wiring's E36. And that's what the 1M was. It has E92 subframes, right. factory, E92 brakes, um, but it has like some E... F- I don't want to say E46, but like E46 yeah. style looking stuff. And then... The N54. The heritage is all there in, yeah. the, you know, in, that, in that car from different places. That's, that's like BMW did OEM plus builds themselves. Yeah. Like that's what I'd call that. You know, where they're just I like, agree, yeah. we have a bunch of shit left over. Let's make this Z- the clown shoe, you know, <laughs> and that's a cool car. Right. Especially the one that came with the S54. Yeah. You know, yeah, I used to love BMW, but they were just, they couldn't give me what I wanted until they started going turbo. Mm. You know what I mean? Like the E46 and the E, the E92 is like the worst car I think ever made. M car. M car, yeah. Yeah. The engine's really rad, but the least exciting engine in that chassis. Yeah. 3,600 pounds, and they make like 300 foot pounds of torque, if you're lucky. Maybe less, actually. Right. They revved high. They sounded good, but they're just just useless, <laughs> slow. But that's why the 1M was, you know, my buddy's 1M was so right. cool. It was like, it was a little lighter and it's just interesting. The V8 sounded amazing, though. Yeah. Yeah, the S65 is cool. The V10 yeah. sick. The, right. the, the V10. But like the, the V10 in the M6 was fucking trash. Yeah. Like when the M5 and M6, it was yes. 300 foot pounds of torque, 500 horsepower. Like sounded amazing. Sounded amazing, Both but s- fucking dog shit slow. <laughs> but that, if they had done that V10 in the E92 mm-hmm. and then the E92 engine into the one series, like yeah. they would have had some gangster cars. Right. You know, right. But, they couldn't see past the tip of their nose and just wanted to make shit safe and They're getting reliable. There. Yeah. They're getting no, there. the F80. The F80 was is like one of the prettiest M cars I think that's ever been made. I, I think, agree. Like I had a Daytona I Violet F80. Agree. I, I agree. love that car. That's definitely the best looking car to me. Not really yeah. a fan of the G80s. Um, I'm, they're growing on me now. Same. But that always happens. You like yeah. them five years after they yes. come out every time. Yes. I E92, agree. I never got that. Never liked the way it looked. Never liked the end. Uh, yeah, I wasn't a fan either. No. So that's E46 the worst one. was cool. I E46 was one. is great. Yeah. Um, I think an E46 with the S85 would be like one of the most gangster mm. street cars you could ever have. Yeah, the motor in those aren't, isn't too hot. The worst thing, though, was those cars just fell apart. Yeah. Headliner sagging, A pillars would fall mm-hmm. off. Like the interiors were shit. Yeah. And then, like, 
they had the subframe issues yes. trailing arm pockets would rip out mm -hmm. like the, the subframe was the biggest thing with those those cars were like mercedes back then where it's like you keep them for five years and you dump that's them it. quick you that's know it. and the value is fucking terrible after yeah they, well now the all of a sudden they're fucking worth something again which was yeah. nuts I know. I mean, that's, I used a, to, that's the crazy part about I it. I used yeah. to pick up E36s for 2500 bucks. Even the piece of shit M3 today is worth 12 grand yeah. somehow, like an E36. Yep. But the E46s, for a while, they were in the teens. Yeah. You know, and now they're $30,000 cars mm -hmm. again. It's crazy how the market's uh, shifted. Even S2000s are fucking yeah. 30, 40,000. And I paid what, 17, 18,000 yeah. dollars? Remember, remember like the CR came out and everyone, like, no one really fucked with it. They were left over all over the place and they, yeah. were like a, they looked like mm -hmm. a race car. Dealers couldn't give those things away. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're $100,000 cars overnight. Now, those are always expensive, though, back then. Yeah, they were expensive, but, they, they, but they just sat on the dealer lots. Yeah. No one wanted to pay that much for an S2000. Right. Same with the NSX. The new NSX came out. No one wanted to touch them. All the fucking car reviewers talked shit about them. <laughs> and I was like, that car looks like it's good. I talked to Matt Farah. He was one of the only people that enjoyed that car. I enjoyed it, too. And I got in it with Sonic had that one. I was like, this thing's fucking you sick. Hear, you hear the turbos. The seats are comfortable. It kind of gave me um, it feels more like of like... McLaren. Yeah. Kind of gave me um, and feels like a supercar. It it does. However, I just feel like the interior gave me like Honda Accord vibes. Yeah, so parts. Yeah, like S two like a like a S two thousand Accord vibe. Right. You know. Like, right. But it sound it sound when it's not hybrid in hybrid. Yeah. Uh, it sounds amazing. It like sounds the turbos. Great. It's it's a nice car. I just don't think that um, I don't know if it was executed properly. I just kind of feel like they could have maybe not made it so expensive. Which well, I'm I, glad they did that with the uh with the super. They kind of made it more. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sure easier for consumers to get i always think when they come out with a hybrid especially when they came out with the hybrid yeah everyone was real anti-hybrid like the right. car guys were like full hybrid, you know yeah. like now everyone's like oh the the, the tesla plaid is pretty good yeah, yeah, you know yeah. i don't like hybrids I, I i see them for what they're doing but but that that's just scary you know people are scared of what they don't know and mm. an, an nsx you pay 135 grand and the battery's never been tested to, you know longevity yeah that thing could turn into a fucking problem real quick. Luckily, Honda hit it. I think. I don't think anyone. I don't think there's any like known issues with the NSX, to my knowledge. I don't think there's enough people with them to. Even, right. I mean, you know. dude, th I remember at one point they there was a fifty thousand dollar rebate if you bought an NSX, they'd give you fifty grand off. I I bet they just couldn't get rid of <laughs> those fucking. Of those and now cars. you can't touch one. They're more than what the you know used. They're yeah. worth more than. Yeah. The market's so strange. I would want one right now, actually, but they just don't really get the appreciation. You gotta, you gotta really like that car. Really yeah, to, to I love them. I yeah. just, I don't want to pay hundred grand for anything right, unless exactly. it's a Porsche. You know, exactly. Like, no, no, thank you. So this has been great, man. This is a great conversation. Um, I don't know. I feel like the flow was there. Yeah, yeah. like it was pretty good. And you, you know, a lot about every like every car we. we spoke about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's it, dude. I, I just that's my life. Yeah, you know, I got kids. I hang out with my kids, and when they go to bed, I'm downloading information and, and honestly youtube's ruined that for me though mm -hmm. like as a viewer yeah because i used to spend my time reading you know and yeah. reading technical things and now i try to get it on youtube and i'm i'm just very unsatisfied as a viewer yeah. with youtube but uh you're getting someone's opinion instead of like hard data I, I always watch like the older videos like yeah. the the school like type videos that they have the yeah. educational basic videos yeah those help those help, but then there's only so much information that you can get from those videos as well. So prior to you, to YouTubing and meeting that YouTuber, mm -hmm. I used YouTuber to, YouTube to like fix my dishwasher. And <laughs> I didn't even know, dude. I didn't even know, and I swear on everything that there was such thing as like a vlog. I did. I didn't. When I started YouTubing, yeah. when I met that dude, I was like, "What do you do?" <laughs> like I, I felt like boomer as hell. Yeah, you know, because I was like, I mean, this was 2016. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know. I think that's kind of when it started popping off because right after that, they made like the, like you could be monetized immediately on YouTube back then. Yeah. Before the 1,000 and 4,000 watch time yeah. hours. Uh, right. Yeah. That, that wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. You were monetized video one. Right. You know, so, um, but that's when it, like people started making real money. Yeah. I mean, he was bragging and telling me he was making like 2,500 bucks a month on Ooh. his views. The, the, the YouTuber at the uh, time that, that introduced me and I was like, you know, it wasn't a lot of money, but I was like, dude, you are like, this is trash. <laughs> like when I, I, I tell you, I stayed up all night. And watch all of his, as many videos as I could. Yeah. Nothing happened. And I was like, if you can make 2,500 bucks a month doing this, I can do it. Yeah. You know, and I got humbled quick though. That's the other thing I'll say. A lot of people now as a YouTuber and, and even back then, oh, I have cool things. You know, I should YouTube, you know, it's not it. Yeah. You could have the fucking gnarliest car collection and be a dork or be boring as fuck. 
and it just fall flat on its face. Yeah. You know, and I, I got humbled. Like I said, I thought my shit was better. I thought I was better at it. And the views weren't coming in the beginning. And it was because I wasn't giving like my personality. I was giving too. I was like trying to be too informative. You know, That's and I my, think a, that was my problem. I think yeah. a lot of people fall into that where they're like, mm -hmm. they think they're teach. They're trying to teach people something. Yeah. Most people are watching for entertainment. They don't right. want to like a, a fucking lesson. That's true, know? man. Damn. I can relate so much to that yeah. in the same way. But honestly, I think that's why I do this because this is more like I can ask the questions I want. Yeah, yeah. And that's more my style of content. Um, but I haven't gotten down to like the personal stuff where I can make enjoyable content to watch. Right. It's 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 hard. Yeah. I mean, I sometimes you just think what you're doing is cool, and it exactly, is exactly in the and moment. It it, do, it doesn't matter. Right. You could do the craziest thing, and it'll get you views, maybe if you're lucky, mm -hmm. but they won't stay, or you know whatever. You have to really like be funny or entertaining yeah. or find an interesting way to give that information out, mm -hmm. you know, or then, race, street race. <laughs> you could do that. If you're going to build a car and go out there and race, that's popular, but yeah, nobody, but wants I, to I just that. don't know the sustainability of that, right? That's like exactly how yeah. many times, like I always tell people with YouTube, you have like two senses that mm -hmm. you get to, that you get to check off. It's sight and sound. Yeah. And if it doesn't look cool and it doesn't, you can't feel that sound. It's not going to hit. So street yeah. race of the night, you just see two taillights go like no one's gonna fucking watch it right like i was telling you my favorite streamers video is that crazy guy with the subaru i we didn't finish telling you do you ever see that video no you probably did when i explained it you're gonna remember this guy rolls up in a subaru and he's like it's a fucking honda he has like some thick new york accent oh yeah i'll yeah, fucking yeah. destroy yeah. the thing and he's like fuck you guys and he leaves. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a funny ass youtube right. video like it was entertaining you know yeah. it wasn't about who won you knew the honda was gonna win if you have half a fucking brain yeah a subaru versus a honda like <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. Like, not that I'm a Honda guy, but I'm definitely not a fucking Subaru guy. Right. But that was fun. But unless you're street racing where it's like real mm -hmm. production value, you can't see shit. Yeah. And you can't do those every day. You can't do... I mean, vlogging, you got to do three videos a week. If you vlog. Yeah. Okay. If you YouTube in general. You have like, three I mean, videos a week. Okay. This, you could probably pull off like every Sunday, I'm going to upload at 9 p.m. Like you could do that. Yeah. But like if you have a channel and you're building something, you got to do at least three videos a week to stay relevant, to, to compete and push your way through all the other right. videos. Right. Good luck doing three street race videos a week <laughs> for 365, <laughs> you know, for a year. Unless you got different cars to race in. But yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right. And even if you do and you you don't know how fast anything is and mm -hmm. everything's fast, but nothing's fast. Like, right. An M4 is fast or it's not. And yeah. you won't know unless you know all the details of the car you're racing. Mm -hmm. If they're if they're close, they might as well be 100 horsepower cars to a yeah. viewer. Who the fuck cares? Right. So the drag racing thing's tough. But yeah. the drama around it could be... That's what I mean. That's what it's the drama around it. Someone needs that. to report the drama, though, from an unbiased. You almost need a channel that follows all of the street racers and reports on the drama and reports the news. Sort of like um, he re he does street racing stuff. No, he does like uh, just car like car news in general. More like, like Life Apollo. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Life Apollo. Yes. That's garbage. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm saying like something yeah. like that, but no. like for street racing. For street mean. racing. Oh, yeah. Sonic talks shit to this guy, and this guy's just put a new turbo on, and they're going out Sunday night, and we'll see what the fuck happens. And then you go there, and then you report, and then you get an interview after. Like that's could be a show in itself if it's real, you know, and if, if it goes down like that, but God, the logistics, the logistics is, I, I don't it's think impossible. That, yeah, it's impossible. I, I don't think it's possible unless you're doing it full time. Um, and if you are doing full time, you need a crew, you need, and a crew. you would need an in because yeah. those dudes are secretive as hell. Yeah. You don't hear about shit until it's two, uh, two days past, mm -hmm. you know? And then you have to get on camera and speak the right way it's for people to be interested. And you got to try to not go to jail while <laughs> exposing yourself yeah. to the, that's which another is the thing too. Yeah. Cause then, it's like the, uh, you know, academics, G DJ academics, probably not, but like he's a reporter on like all the industry news, yep. like what's going on in the rappers and stuff like mm -hmm. that. He basically, you need like an academics of the street racing scene. Right. You know? And you could just, you could get clips submitted to you where you probably don't have to go to the street races mm -hmm. where like Sonic could go and just like submit his clip to this guy just yeah. to get a little clout and get some traction to his channel. Yeah. And then that dude will have some like reference material when mm -hmm. talking about the news, but It'd be fucking crazy. But it's also hard to build a brand that way, I think, yeah. as well. Because it's like, oh, you're reporting. It's not you. Like, yeah, it's, it's not, not you. you. They only yeah. care about is the information. Right. You know? So those are things to think about when it comes to content that people don't really, you know. <sighs> content is, you have to be creative. You have yeah. to be really creative or get lucky. Yeah. That's, that's it. Because if, if you just think you're going to vlog, you know, going to get your coffee and, <laughs> nobody you know, cares. changing your oil. No one nobody, gives a nobody fuck. Cares. There's so much of that. There's so much of everything. Yeah. 
I can't. I'm a terrible viewer. I watch like fucking people's court on YouTube because I can't stand. <laughs> I can't stand vlogs and builds and. I only watch TJ Hunt. That's the only. That's the only really? person I watch. Yeah, I, because uh, just because of what he's doing, man. Like he's just like he's up there, man. He's got. I feel like he's got it all. Him and Adam. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just it's like he's living. He's living the dream. He's got it's all funny the cars. Yeah. It's funny to hear like because like I know him, you mm-hmm. know, and I know he has fans and stuff. That's somebody that I. I look up to you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. that's funny yeah because he's you know he's a great great dude nice yeah. dude but he's just as green as anyone else yeah you know he doesn't know everything not, not that he should not that anyone does mm-hmm. but like that was that was once again my my arrogance is like thinking i know more i've experienced more yeah like but tj hunt's one of the biggest youtube not me yeah you know adam lz You've seen everything he's done with cars. From yep. day one, he's been doing cars on YouTube. You, mm-hmm. you BMX, and then, oh, I'm going to get this 240, and you can watch the whole thing. Yeah. And, like, he'll humble your ass because I'm not the biggest YouTuber. He is. Yeah. You know, Cletus, there's probably people that drag race that are faster. You know, well, Cletus probably not. Too, Cletus yeah. fucks. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? In everything, there's somebody better. Right. Or smarter or no more passionate or mm-hmm. whatever, but they're not the biggest. Right. Because they don't have that, like it factor tj's got one thing that i'll I'll t- then you probably can recognize this too where you watch a video have you ever watched a casey neistat video yeah so he's like the when it comes to vlogging he's probably the reason why that became a big thing so like tj's the automotive casey neistat like you watch yeah. a casey neistat video nothing fucking happens yeah it's some pretty b-roll something happens but you walk away and you're like what the fuck what did I just watch? watch? Yeah. I don't. I didn't gain anything, but I did not upset. I didn't yeah. like get pissed and click off of it. I mm-hmm. watched it all the way to the end. There's something there with TJ that I'm going to say specifically. TJ has that yeah, Adam nice. doesn't. Yeah. But with Adam, you're getting like he's nuts. He'll fucking drift mm-hmm. whatever. He'll mod whatever. He he works on his own shit. He gets his hands dirty. Right. You know. So like that. Each person has their own their own respectable thing. Right. But, yeah, T- TJ's something about his videos are entertaining. The way he lays them out, you know, yeah, the I way he talks. Him. Yeah, I could watch him. I think yeah. um, that's one. I, I usually just check in to see what he's doing, um, what builds he's he's working on. Because like it's like if I had the money like that, I'd probably be doing the same exact shit. Yeah. I mean, my idea with like the one thing TJ did, and I I appreciate that he did it, and he still does it, and it did work. Was uh, my idea was banking all that R34 footage and releasing it in succession mm. so it was just like one two three four five yeah. cars done i'm at grid life giving it a purpose because that's the other thing there's no purpose to any of this why am i building that mm. I, I don't know yeah. <laughs> it's just you know like why jimmy build the ek with it no one knows yeah but like if you have a purpose and if you do it where it's easy like adam's r34 build was spread out over six months. it was more real right because it took him six months he was getting parts and mm. working in between events and all that but you weren't able to like digest it the same and yeah. so I went to TJ with that idea. I was like, if you do this, I'm down to do it, but I want you to try something. And he was doing it, but it was taking a while at paint. His M4, he he took that idea and applied it to the M4 build. Yeah. Or whatever was before the R34. I think it was the M4. The M4 was first. Yeah. He applied well, actually, that. Actually, uh, a good question. No, no. R34 was first. There M- was something right before the R34. The, the, midnight, the one you did, right? Yeah. There was something uh, right before it. He applied that idea to that build. Mm-hmm. It hit heavy. I think it was the M4. I think the M4 went first, but was wasn't first. completely done. Yes. And then he did yes. the 34, and then the he went SEMA. back to the M4. Right, right. So he kind of fucked that up, okay. but he did it before. That was my idea. I was like, you got to film this, bank it. It's going to be a nightmare, and it is a fucking nightmare to do, yeah. by the way. But he did it because <laughs> it was a year and a half. Right. It was at paint for eight months, you know? So it was like, it worked, though. Because you've yeah. got to fucking experience the whole build without getting bored mm-hmm. or like no bullshit, no, f- no, nothing in between. And uh, I think you're going to see more of that. I think you're going to see more long format style. Yeah. Because it, it's better. Right. It's That's like Matt, Matt Armstrong is another one. Yes. Yeah. Who does like. He's long. got the money to fucking do that with those views. But his videos are re- like yeah. really. Yeah. Like that's. He's really good. Yep. His storytelling is that on has, point. It has to be like that. Yeah. If it takes you a year to build something and you literally upload about it once a month, by month three, I'm over it. And then I'm waiting <laughs> yeah. for month 12 and then watching them backwards. You right. Know? Right. So it's, I don't know. YouTube's tough. Be. But this was fun, man. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, it's cold in here. We the heater the heat. shut yeah. off. But it was cool though. It's we, probably it was, 25 degrees in here. You think so? No, no. It's probably like 40. <laughs> nice. It's a solid 40. It's not too bad though. I kind of distracted myself with the yeah. conversation. Yeah. So um, tell the viewers where to find you. 
Oh, just on YouTube, Tommy F. Yeah, on Instagram, at Tommy F. Yeah, mm-hmm. T-O-M-M-Y-F-Y-E-A-H. I actually, uh, so that, the funny thing is I didn't even say how we, how we connected. Oh, my God. <laughs> we got to tell that story. Yeah. Do, do you want to tell it? Do you want me to tell it? I mean, there's really no story. I mean, there's yeah, nothing. It. It's, yeah. like, it's, it's like two lines. I have a Facebook group, yeah. Tommy F. Yeah, on Facebook. It's got like 24,000 people in uh-huh. it. And what, somebody reached out to you? Yes. Yeah, so, so one of them reached out to him and said, hey, you should have Tommy on. And your response was like, oh, I tried. I didn't hear back. I reached out to you in August. Okay. Because I was having a conversation in, in, uh, in uh, my boy Kai. He has a Supra. Mm-hmm. I was putting on a lip on my car. He was like, yo, you know, you should try to interview Tommy F. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's actually not a bad idea. So we started looking and then I, I reached out to you on my personal account. And, and I, yeah. I get a lot of DM requests. I wasn't like, expecting you to answer because I was like, he's definitely not going to answer, but whatever. No, so we'll I, I would have. It's just like I get so many and sometimes There's they get hidden. requests also. Yeah, yeah sometimes yeah. they get hidden. So yeah. nor- normal people, no, like uh, <laughs> normal people, like they don't have the DM. I don't know if you do. You probably have enough followers to have the separated DM thing, right? Yeah, primary you have general, gen- you have hidden, exactly. Requests hidden, and then hidden. top, yes. and all. So, I don't know what goes in hidden or I don't dude, understand what Dude, I'll look at hidden and they'll be like, hey man, nice job or, or whatever. Like, why story. the fuck do you yeah, hide this? And then I get people like, fuck you. And I'm like, you, you could have hit that one. <laughs> so anyway, he did that. So someone put in my group like this, this conversation yeah. with you and they're like, yeah, uh, they like talk shit to me and I'm like, I search your name that yeah. they searched that they were talking to. And I was like, I have nothing. Yeah. But I had just seen like the Jordan arcade team because I know Jordan. Right. I'd seen that. And I was like, I'm not against it, but I, he didn't reach out. And it, that's the problem with text, right? Women weaponize it. And so <laughs> when, when I said it, it looked like I was talking shit probably where I was like, no one reached out. And I just, I didn't take it that way. No, okay, because because yeah. a lot of people were like, "Get him, you got you know whatever." No, like, no, no. Shit. I, I didn't take it that way at yeah. all. I was like, "Oh, he, it's probably because I followed you on my personal." I don't yeah. follow, so I don't follow people on the per, on the podcast page that I don't interview. Okay, so Makes that sense. way, just so people, if they want to snoop around and see who's they next, can they can right. see. Right. Okay. So I was like, you know what? Let me wait till he approves, and then once we do the interview, then I can follow him. But, but yeah, um, no, that that was perfect. Thank you so much, bro. Appreciate you. Out. Uh, guys, make sure you guys like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening, make sure you guys are listening on all streaming platforms. And yeah, catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Bye. Shit. How long was that? Fucking two hours. I don't know. Was it? I, I was probably longer, honestly. I can't move the camera. No.